There we go. On. Yeah. Are we are we in now? Yeah. We it in should now? be good now. Does that mean? So do I have to do the whole thing again? It means it means that that uh, that the audio wasn't there for our intro. All right. Well, roll it back. Roll it back. Okay. Do you want, uh, you, you yeah. want me to play hit you with the intro again. Play music again? Play music again. Play the audio wasn't there for our yeah. intro. Run it All right. Back. Well, roll it back. Roll it back. Oh, all right. Roll it back. We'll do it live. <laughs> you want me to do it? We are doing it. We are doing it live. That's what we're doing. We're doing it live. All, all right. right. One more time. Yeah, yeah. One more time. One more time. Run it back. It, it's a bop anyways. It is kind of a bop. It is a bop. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 4D podcast. In the blue corner, we should actually get colors for these corners. In the blue corner, the one, the only, the Liam Maxwell. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's still hot. I still, yeah. Woo, we love you, Liam. Oh, my gosh. Even if your opinions are sometimes bad. Woo. And most of the time bad. In the other corner, the unwilling ginger, the Greg Rin. And of course, I am the producer Nathaniel, who always has correct opinions. And if you think I don't, well, you're just wrong. Welcome to the show. Are those all our viewers yeah, saying it, those it, things? It clearly worked. Yeah. The, yeah. The, you, oh, you. I, sorry, Greg. I didn't tell you. I secretly installed the um, the audience sound. On, on, so our, on our, the soundboard. Yeah. No, no, just, just, just. You could just like it's a little telepathy thing. It's, it's magic. <laughs> yeah, it's witchcraft. There I'm a witch. Thing. Okay, I, I didn't want to. On this, on the switcher board in the in the top right, there's a button that says record. You should click that one too. Ah. Uh-huh. It, it's green. Yeah, click it. Click the button. There you go. It's red. Now it's recording. So it wasn't recording previously. Yeah, but we were going live still. Okay. So all of our viewers we'll do it again. Well, doesn't doesn't it, YouTube just record it anyway? Yeah, it does. Okay, but we can actually fine. get the file if we want to cut it up. Yeah, well, that's fine. That's okay. Intro. Let's so, do the intro again. So do it one more time. One more time. One no, more no, time, no, 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 no. No. You know what they say. The third, the third time's the charm. We're not going to do the intro. But, I did um, miss the whole ginger <laughs> preamble though, didn't we? Which I thought was great content. So for our viewers that weren't able to listen because we're incompetent. For those of for those of you who can't read lips, um, look at this man. We were having we a discussion agree. on whether I was a ginger or zoom not, and beard. it was can established. Is there a way for you me to zoom in? You cannot zoom in. Let's not risk that. If there was, I wouldn't tell you. Let's not risk that. That's um, <laughs> first slash over guys, zooming in. Guys, we to, I am a red person. My skin tone, I get pink out in the sun. I get so, red. So when they were singing that song I'm, in Peter Pan, that was about you? Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah, I went there. Okay. We're gonna get we're, canceled. We're, oh, we're, we're already canceled, but we, we're gonna get to that one though. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. Anyways, not a ginger. That'll be for another podcast. We can talk about so, how I'm not. Yeah. Actually, so, a ginger. So I'm now. I'm in the seat. I have the power. We switch things up a little. We bit. switch yeah. things up a little, which Except means, me. as <laughs> promised, I have Darth Sand on my soundboard. This is where the fun begins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Darth Sands viewer <laughs> count. going to be to skyrocket. Greg, Greg might try to stop me, but... Uh, you can't. <laughs> he's absolutely right. I'm absolutely right. Well, for our viewers at home, uh, we have been going through a series. This is episode two of our... Well, do we have a short name for this? Just watch original Disney classics and then watch their live-action remakes and then Compare talk about and it. contrast. That's... That's kind of our MO here with yeah. our first few episodes. I think there's about 10 live action ones that we're going to go through. So Sounds we're, like we're kind lot. of, we're, we're starting from, I mean, so, I mean, there have been a lot of live action because, I mean, Disney started with intentionally <laughs> adapting fairy tale, like stuff yeah, that was sure. uh, yeah. uh, public domain. Mm-hmm. So there are, so there's more than like one live action Jungle Book and, and right. there's a bunch of live action stuff, but we're specifically looking at, and it was like, uh, what, what was, uh, we just did Beauty and the Beast, which was one of the first ones, and that was 2017. Yeah, mm-hmm. this like recent rash of live action, it, functionally shot for shot remakes. Yeah, it, it's and, like their attempt, kind of their attempt to almost like I don't, I don't want to say replace. I don't think that's what they're trying to do, but I think they want this generation to to build nostalgia around these movies rather than the the original animated ones. Whereas yeah. we grew up with those, and we kind of have nostalgic uh, value put into those movies. I think they're trying to, to the idea is well those were successful let's just redo those so we can make more money introduce it to a new generation I, I don't yeah, know I do you think kids still watch the original ones 
I mean, now that now that it's possible with, the, I think there was a phase there where you were like, oh, they they would put them in the the vault. They still do yeah, that. Yeah, no, the, because okay. they don't do people don't people don't buy physical media. Yeah. Anymore. It, so before it was like you couldn't get at, like certain ones would be like you couldn't have access to them unless you like had the original laying around somewhere, uh, and and I guess yeah they recently changed that. So now what was I the feel reasoning like for that. I, artificial them. scarcity. I mean, to make it, yeah, like they they were to build you know, in some demand for it. I yeah. guess. I don't, I don't they weren't at Blockbuster. I mean, you could. I mean, yeah. But if you wanted to own a physical copy, certain at certain I'm not times, even sure if they were at Blockbuster. Yeah, certain years you wouldn't be able to get. We owned all of them on VHS, so it was never a problem <laughs> in my household. <laughs> Kids, if you don't know what VHS is, ask your parents. Um, so, anyways, so today's show we are going to be talking about Beauty and the Beast, both the original and the live action that the three of us have watched uh the original we watched the original together we watched the live action on our own and we've got thoughts and opinions on on all of them and i think uh we're going to start with talking about the original because that's kind of what the story is based off of even if we're going to be talking about the live action one it's done in response to an original one so we're going to start there and hopefully um, hopefully with some more positive words although i think i think uh, I, I don't worry i have the positive word button right here pure garbage oh, no, <laughs> that's my bad guys i th- i think i think we're going to have some differing opinions on this one yeah uh, i think last episode was pretty chalk i think we all right. agreed with each other yeah did you say it was pretty chalk pretty chalk chalk yeah, is that chalk. a thing people say it's like a sports term is it right? Greg, you you sports. He sounded really confirm? confident when he, he said really it, so I believed him. <laughs> you shouldn't have even I'm had to explain it. Sure. Well, yeah, 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 I was very confident. I said, anywho, um, I think gauging the kind of the room, I think we might have some <laughs> differing opinions here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I'll just do a quick little rundown of Beauty and the Beast. It kind of get us kicked off. Uh, the original. So the original Beauty and the Beast starts off in what time frame would you say it is? It's in France. It's like so it, it's it feels like it's seventeen eighteen hundred like Victorian yeah. era France. Yeah, although like, you wouldn't call France Victorian era because that's not. It's uh, it's somewhere in France in in that period. They have of muskets. Time. They have so there it's like concurrent with three musketeers. It's one of those weird muskets that like opens up and it's really it's really broad. But uh, well, I have something to say about that for the remake. But we'll get there. <laughs> so you're introduced to Belle, who is a really kind of adventurous soul who is not content with the uh, Shire-like lifestyle of t- the town, um, although it is appealing in its in its comfortability. Uh, she is not enthused by that at all. She wants adventure. It opens up with a really um, kind of telling song of how she feels about things, that she wants adventure in the great wide somewhere, uh, that she's not uh, satisfied with this provincial life. Um, and anyway, she goes around the town. The townspeople are singing. Uh, one way or another, her father gets gets caught up in in the beast's dungeon. He makes his way to the castle because he loses his way. He has to find shelter, so he goes there. The beast finds him there, is upset that there are visitors, and he throws him into uh, the, the dungeon. I, I'm, I didn't do the, the, the prologue. The prologue is that the beast was a handsome prince who turned away an old hag uh, because she was see- she- seeking shelter. He turned her away. In the prologue, it says because she's ugly, which is which is pretty funny. You're like, no. Nah. Well, I mean, the point is like he's he's a dick. He's, yeah, he's super. He's a he's a crummy dude. Sends her away, so she curses him to be a beast, and along with him. I don't think they say this, but you obviously you, you yeah, understand yeah, it. it that everybody, everybody in the castle is turned into like inanimate objects. So Bell's uh, father finds his way there. He gets locked up. Crazy uh, old Maurice. Cr- old, old crazy Maurice finds his way there. So then Bell finds the horse that ran away. Philippe uh, leads leads Bell back to the castle. She trades places with her father, uh, and then her and the beast now start to develop a relationship in her solitude in the castle. I guess solitude's not the word, but in, in her in her captivity. Captivity. There you go. Um, her and the beast develop a relationship, and it eventually turns into a loving one. He kind of lets her go because she still misses her father and he cares about her now. It's a really cool development moment. We'll talk about that. Uh, she goes back to get her father. The town is kind of turned on him because he's he sounds cra- like understandably he sounds a little nuts. Uh, she reveals that he's not crazy, that there is a beast, uh, but then they all get scared and Gaston leading the charge, who is kind of like the uh, the the main villain of the story. Antagonist. And he's just, yeah, I mean, he's yeah. just your, your typical douchey, 
Uh, he's amazing. He, I love he, him. He's he's incredible. He's, he's hilarious. Uh, he leads the charge, gets the people riled up. They go to kill the beast. There's a big fight. Uh, he he shoots the beast with an arrow. He stabs him, but Bell comes back. He ends up dying by falling off the castle, and the beast is left there on his last breaths. They tell each other that they love each other. The spell is broken. And that's the end of the story. Happily ever after. Hooray. There were definitely no sequels, <clears throat> actually. I, th- I think they actually didn't do any. So, I mean, there was a while when Disney was doing like a bunch of straight to DVD garbage. So there's a Mulan 2, there's a Lion King 2, which Lion is King 1.5. 1.5. But so the, the ones they did for, they did a couple of like prequels and midquels. So they did, <laughs> they did one for Little Mermaid. Where it's like her, her mother dies because she was like saving a music box Oof. or something. So it's basically Footloose. And then they're like, but like Ariel, like, quote With unquote, no they, they have a whole scene where Ariel dies. And it's like, but you know, she doesn't die because of the first movie. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> but anyways, the, so Beauty I, and think the Beast. I think it's two Beauty and the Beast, like mid quills while she's at the oh, castle. Gosh. Oh gosh. Woof. Anyways, that's not what we're talking about. Um, so, yeah, we watched the original. Uh, there's a lot of great music. Great music, and uh, oh yeah, and let's get your guys' thoughts. So I, I'm really interested. Liam's been holding this in. We all watched it. And me and Nathaniel were <laughs> uh, were excited. We we thought the movie was great. That's all we said. Uh, we'd like to save a lot of our takes for the show. Movie and ended, and Liam we just, just kind of stayed quiet. Uh, yeah. So I'm very yeah. anxious to hear uh, some of your thoughts. We man. no so, longer we no longer converse about the movies after we watch them because we save all of our takes. Yeah. for the podcast, they're valuable. Our takes friendships are are going take. downhill. <laughs> As we do, <laughs> the the friendship, episodes we viewers do. are going up, but friendships are plummeting. <laughs> Worth it. We're gonna make right. a lot of money off of this. All right, let me let me let me hear some of your I thoughts, man. Just man, it didn't do it for me. Okay, the, the hold on the cartoon version. The, the cartoon yes, this is, this is the animated original. version didn't do it for me. I would go as far as to say my opinion of it went down <laughs> after seeing it the other day. I, I want to know why. So uncivilized. There's, there was an element of. The Stockholm syndrome, with her falling in love with her cap captor. Okay. In no way was it believable to me that they would be able to turn that around to start like loving each other. Okay. It okay. was not fleshed out enough. Mm-hmm. Which I will say. Did you think they did is, that in the live action? Yes. You, 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 you yes. Legit, you I legitimately do, think they. I will it. say I that do they, think they touched fleshed on that more. Oh. Continue. Continue. That was a big piece of it. Obviously, a big piece of the original Disney movies are the songs. Mm-hmm. Don't Man, care for them. That is hot take. Bro, do we, do we have songs. a Liam hot take button? Uh, but <laughs> I, I, I have genuinely a, don't care for the see, songs. What I got for him? Oh, here, yeah, here I got it. <laughs> it. <laughs> I so wait. So which songs did you like? Do you like any of them? I can't say I liked any of them. <laughs> Oh my I can't say I disliked like, any of them. Legitimately, you don't like. There was not a single really? like. I will say, watching the Little Mermaid, uh, whole new world. Okay, okay. No, not whole new world. Part of your part world. of your world. <laughs> yeah, we haven't uh, gotten to that under one yet. The sea, under the sea. Those ones, like I got, I got kiss excited. Yeah, I kissed the girl. Oh, yeah. I got excited when they started playing. And those I, were my favorite parts of those movies. Were the songs? Right. Okay. Obviously, you need a good plot to go along with it. But those are my sure. favorite parts of those movies. So, I was not excited about any song starting in the Beauty of the Beast. So you're not only saying that the plot and the story isn't as compelling as The Little Mermaid, because right now we have two to go off of. By the end of this, we'll have a yeah. huge measure of, of, of ranking and mm-hmm. talking about. But out of the two that we've watched, Little Mermaid and Beauty and the Beast, you not only think that The Little Mermaid has a better storyline, but you also think it has better music. Correct. And this is just, I, just the original. I, I mean, it, it might it might stand to reason that you think this the sequel, uh, the remakes as well. But as as of right now, just the original you're talking about. Yeah. All right. I would take Little Mermaid, <laughs> original. Ori- speaking of the originals, I would take Little Mermaid over Beauty and the Beast all day, all day long, just blowing it out of the water. Right, um, okay. I just like so. I, we're, so let me just like clarify. Yeah. You're not just saying that. Oh, Little Mermaid is. <laughs> You know, my favorite, and then Beauty and the Beast is below it. You're saying, I like Little Mermaid, and I actively don't like the songs in Beauty and the Beast. That's the, that's the Liam also, Maxwell hot take. Yeah. And you and, and as a result, you don't like this, the movie at all. Not just because the music is bad, but the story is also... I didn't care for it. Okay. I didn't care for it. And I can we can talk about my opinion of the live action in conjuncture, oh, gosh. or do we want to kick it over to Nathaniel and get his thoughts? Because yeah, those are my thoughts. I saved them for a couple days. They were they were boiling no, no, up inside no, that, of that's me. That's good. That's good. Before before I destroy you, uh, we'll hear from Nathaniel. <laughs> and one last thing I want to say. I I don't 
I wouldn't say I hated Beauty and the Beast. It was still a somewhat enjoyable watch. Okay. In the world of Disney. What What about it do you like? Is it, or, or is there's not enough there for you to even have a take on that? It's just that it wasn't horrible to watch? Yeah. Okay. I didn't laugh like I did in Little Mermaid. It didn't make me feel like any sort of way emotionally towards the end when they're like had their oh, man, big dude. romantic scene. Like it didn't get me to that point where I was feeling anything emotionally there. I think I cried in that movie. I think you did too. Yeah, I, I was actually. You were an emotional guy. Yeah, I, 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 I said it too. I was like, I, I don't have a lot of sleep. I might, I might cry today, guys. That's why I didn't want to crap one of your opinion right away and be like, <laughs> dude, quit. grow well, up. All counts. It doesn't make sense. We sucked. Grow up. All right, wait, Nathaniel. <laughs> what did you think about the original Beauty and the Beast? Okay, so I, I came into this uh, feeling about the same way as I did about Little Mermaid. Uh, I remember enjoying it. Haven't seen it in a really long time. It's not one of the Disney movies I go back to frequently. Love the music, but, you know, just don't watch it frequently. I mean, I know all the songs, just like Little Mermaid. I know all the songs, um, and I like all the songs, but I would never, you know, if, if I'm picking out which Disney movie we're watching, for me, it's it's like it's Aladdin and Mulan and then some of the older ones uh, and Lion King. Uh, it, it hit me harder than I thought it would. Yeah. I, I went back and I was like, wait a minute, the plot's actually like really good. And I actually, I completely disagree about the Stockholm Syndrome thing. Mm. I think that's worse in the, oh, well, we're going to talk about the remake. The remake, I hated it, but we'll, we'll get there. But I, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was, I thought it was solid all the way through. Mm -hmm. um, the music is incredible. I, I think Lumiere and Cogsworth are hysterical. Cogsworth is him. Like, yeah, he, he's, I love him. They're great. Um, and yeah, I think the romance is really touching. I think uh, I think it's well developed. I think you see both you know both Beast and Belle. They obviously do it in song, but you see them learning to like you. You get to see them fall in love. Like they kind of yada yada through. There's it's an, it's only an hour and a half movie, mm -hmm. so they don't spend a, a tremendous amount of time on it. But I think they spend enough time on it, and you get the sense that time has passed. That mm -hmm. there's been a progression of time. That Belle's been here for some time, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, but but let's be honest. In all of them. Uh, my screen's just a little black, Greg. Just move your mouse. Okay, we're good. I even the Little Mermaid, we're like, oh, she just falls in love with him on first sight, right? So I think that part of it, you know, they can't spend ten million years on establishing the romance, but I think they do a really good job with what they have, and I think every single song, just banger after banger mm. after banger after banger. I I think just every song slaps, and Liam's giving a face that Liam's, Liam's looking like, eh, I don't know if he's laughing, but that's because he's wrong. He's wrong. <laughs> He's just wrong. It's okay. We should do a poll with the viewers <laughs> or the people who watch the podcast. And I'm who not, they agree with? I'm not necessarily Can you see saying viewers from I'm, there. Look, I, uh, we got two. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not necessarily saying that I think they're on a like a, a tier above Little Mermaid. I think Little Mermaid songs sure, are all not. really solid too. Mm -hmm. But man, uh, be our guest, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, I like Provincial Life. Um, that one's like... Something there that wasn't there. Yeah, something that there that song. wasn't there before. That was really good. But man, Gaston's song... Gaston's song is so amazing. good. Both of his songs, Kill the Beast is amazing. It's just, yeah. they, they're just... And they're they're exactly... They're not too long. And that was one thing I noticed in the remake. Oh, gosh. Every song got stretched on for... Oh, my gosh. All right. We, well, I guess we're going to transition to the remake. Well, I want to okay. get my takes on, on, take the on the original first before, before hey, we get well, there. Yeah. I, but phew, I hated the remake. It was It was... It was atrocious. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> Bring it on. Okay. So the, the story of Beauty and the Beast is in, it's in, it's amazing. It's not just, like, good or just, like, hey, that's kind of charming. Like, it is – there is so much depth to that story, and there are so much realer characters. It's probably not a word, but more – there's more depth to the characters. Real -er -er -er. And it, it, I think it's – well, I can't say it's, it's the only one because Aladdin is a similar one, but – the story isn't about Belle. It's about the Beast. He is he is the main character in this movie. Uh, yes, it's, it's told through Belle a lot of the time, but her character development is functionally none. I mean, she starts off as somebody wanting adventure, and she kind of gets adventure. You're saying in the original? It, yeah. Or I guess yeah. both, but in the both, original. But, but like yeah. she, she wants something that is, that is not safe, but that's not boring, and she gets exactly what she wants, and she stays the same the whole time. She's a very charming in, in in her town considered odd mm -hmm. but that just means that she just doesn't want the norm so she gets that she's really fascinated with the castle this is why for her it was better because in reality going back to the town that she was from was more like a prison than what she was in there because people just didn't understand her 
And it's not like they were like they weren't cruel people, although the remake might tell you otherwise. Uh, and Gaston, yes, is is a complete uh, jackass. But what's weird is the remake tried to make Gaston like a little bit more um, we'll, we'll likable, to, we'll, but we'll, ironically, <laughs> I think makes him worse. We'll get to the to the remake, anyways. So the original Beauty and the Beast story is like. So you have this character in the Beast who I don't know if we ever actually get him a name, but but he's he's the Beast before he was a Beast, and I, I, I believe his name is um, Sam. Okay. Anyways, so we have so the Beast Sam. before he's a Beast, and he's he's living this luxurious, self pleasing lifestyle, and somebody comes along and reveals to him his ugliness, like like it turns the inside of him to the external, and saying. Yeah, I'm gonna make you look as 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 nasty as you actually are. Although, and, although, and I mentioned this while we were watching it, he's kind of hot, Harry Chad. I'm not, like I'm not, <laughs> he's I, I, hot. like I'm this not gonna is, lie. This is where we got the I'm name Harry lie. Chad from, is because he's kind of just a Harry Chad. Um, but but we'll assume that the live action is a better visual depiction of what he probably looks like, yeah. which is hideous what, and, what, and horrible. Uh, uh, like he looks like bad CG. <laughs> he looks like bad CG. Yeah. It looks like you're staring at like a, a 1990s computer screen. <laughs> I just keep like, going back to Chex Quest. <laughs> yeah. He's, and anyways, so so he's turned into this hideous thing, right? And now he's left with that, and he's not only angry and upset, but he know like he. He also hates himself for it. I mean, you have all these scenes where, you know, the, the father comes in and he's just angry. He's not really even seeking a, like a solution for his problem. He's not like waiting like, hey, do you have a daughter? Do you have anybody from the town that you could send this way to potentially? He just he doesn't believe that it's possible that anybody can love him because he sees how ugly he is. And so he's broken completely. And Belle enters into his life and he sees her selflessness and she's like the embodiment of grace in his life right so he's he's been hit hard with the truth and the the ugliness of who he is and has been revealed to him and he can't reconcile with that even when she's there it doesn't it doesn't phase him at all he doesn't stop and go oh hey like and like straighten up and whatever hey. like he like it's everybody else that has to consistently tell him stop being such a jackass and ultimately that doesn't even work he chases her away and in he you know he goes and he rescues rescues her from the wolves and she comes back, but it's in seeing her sit with him and treat him like a human, even though he doesn't deserve to be treated like a human, that starts to change his heart. And that's why you get this like amazing song, my favorite song in the whole thing, which is something that wasn't there before, where he starts talking about the way he's feeling. That he's like, nobody's ever like touched my paw and not been scared off by it. Nobody's ever looked at me this way before. And you can see it's starting to change him as a person to where when he finally does have character development and change, it's not a visual outward appearance. He changes on the inside and he says, Hey, you're like, you need to go hang out with your dad, right? Like you need to go take <laughs> care of him. And he knows what that means. There's not a spell like there was in, in the new little mermaid where he forgot how to, how to transfer it. And it's gotta be true love. No, he knows that there's a motivation there, but he, he loves her more than that. And he's actually able, like, like it's through her intervention in his life that he actually is able to change. Because when you're, when you're presented with your own mess and your own ugliness, that's typically what we try to do. We try to dig inwardly and we try to isolate and there isn't any fixing it in that. You know, like there has to be outward intervention into your life to change you. I mean, that's like, it's a very like Christ-like character, Bell, who comes in and changes him externally, even though, he is ugly and unlovable. He is still loved by somebody that changes him as a person. And so in that change, you ultimately get him at the end giving that up selflessly. And so now he has in turn, because he's been, that beauty has been revealed to him, he is then in turn able to act like that. And, and it's incredible. And you see him give up what, what would have actually cured him because he feels like, you know, this, this was the main thing. Like, I, like I've already fixed myself on the inside. I, like, I, like I know, I know what that all that, that all means. That that yeah. changing the outward appearance isn't as important anymore, um, and so he's sad. Obviously, he, you know, he, it's it's tragic for him, which is why I think that the song "Evermore" and the new one, although actually a really catchy song, really good, didn't make much sense to the story because in reality he's he's sad, he's somber, like he like he misses her. Like when Gaston comes, he's he's not weeping, but he's moping. Uh, you don't think that's a somber song? That song is about him always feeling like she's there, like even if she goes away. He's yeah. like, he's like, he's like, you'll never leave my side. 
And then he's I sitting, still read it in like a somber tone, though. Well, he he sings it in a very baritone, like like deep. I, I mean, his 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 tone is a little. I I don't even know if it's, it's somber. like bittersweet. The, I mean, it's like bittersweet. All, all of what he's talking about is is what I just like is her changing his. He's like, I used to hate love. I used to hate all these things, and mm-hmm. you've changed all that in me. And now you'll forever be with me. And, but, and like, I, I guess I just didn't have the same. I think it took away from the power of him giving that up and saying, "Hey, it's gonna make me sad, but I know it's gonna make you happy." And I know, like, this needs to happen. Anyways, how does not not like shake your soul? And then you watch The Little Mermaid, and you're like, "Oh, it's about like a teenager really liking a boy, and then her eventually getting." N- not to say that, that that there are some deeper messages in The Little Mermaid, but when you watch Beauty and the Beast, it's like, oh. <laughs> Like I just felt like, like I felt like I like I I like I related to the Beast so much more than any other Disney character. And like you, Nathaniel, I just kind of lumped all these old Disney movies in the same big bubble of being these are old Disney movies. The music is great, and the songs are fun to sing to, which they are. And they're phenomenal in this movie. Uh, but that story just it just rocked me, man. Yeah. Well, it you do so kind of look like the Beast. I was well, gonna say. Uh, anyway, I was gonna uh, say uh, the uh, the irony. The, the true irony here is that horn. the ginger is the one who has more of a soul, and Liam's like, no, I hate, I hate, I, will I hate say, sunshine. Uh, it's not, Love, never, I've no. never said that sentence in my life. Uh, I will say <laughs> the scene that you're talking about hit me. That scene yeah. hit me where he let her go, mm-hmm. and then like when Cogsworth comes in, is like excited and stuff. He's like, we're gonna do it. He's, he's like, like, let, I her, let go. her go. Mm. That I get that. Hundred percent get that. That hit me. Mm. Yeah, and, but and the other notes didn't. Necessarily didn't it, yeah, it's okay if it didn't land for you. But the, 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 that's why I don't buy the whole the whole. Uh, oh, she's just got Stockholm syndrome. Is like no, um, Stockholm syndrome is like over time you just spend so much time with your captor that you just start to sympathize, sympathize with them. But that's not what's happening here. What's happening is because you know initially they're both just you know angry at each other. Beast is just kind of resigned to he, you know he's like like you said I mean she has the choice in, yeah. to leave him dead yeah and it, it, she's the one she's the one that 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 picks him up I mean like that's why like like the story isn't necessarily about her like developing in any way it's not about her hating him and then coming to love him like that's the, that's a side like her character functionally is like grace permeated throughout the whole story it never changes yeah but why does he need to keep a prisoner at all because because he's a horrible person that's the whole okay. point well, they, they they started off their relationship with her as the prisoner. Yes, I don't see any. I don't see okay. any arc where the, right. now they're in love. Okay, I didn't. So, it didn't right. hit. Liam, I'm gonna break this down for you. <laughs> okay, so here's what happens. Um, Maurice trespasses on his property, and the beast is just he's just angry and vindictive, and mm-hmm. so he just throws him in prison. Mm-hmm. Belle comes by to rescue her, uh, him rescue Maurice, and <clears throat> she agrees to. Take his Trade place because again spot. he's being he's just being yep. mean and vindictive because he he has nothing else right he's just bitter he's given up hope right and when she agrees to take his spot that gives him like a small instance of hope and for the rest of the servants too are also like maybe she's the one that's why that's why they're like hey you you know don't leave her in a cell show her to your, to to a room and so he does and then the whole scene where he's at, trying to ask her to dinner. He's still he 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 has this teeny tiny bit of hope that hey maybe something could change, but then through that whole thing he's he you know he falls back into his cynicism where he's like obviously she's never gonna love me this is not gonna work yeah and then just get you know blows up at her, um, but then you know over time she she the whole reason she you know runs away and gets attacked by wolves is she busts into the west wing which she's not supposed to do and finds the rose. Mm-hmm. And goes to touch it, and he's like, "You know what you could have done, because you know it could have killed him, and presumably messed up everything for everyone else." Mm-hmm. So he's like rightfully angry, although she has no idea why, and he doesn't explain it to her. And so he blows up at her and just yells, "Get out!" And so she runs, and then he, that's when he realizes, um, you know, that's she, that's, she cares that's that about moment me when she, he way. starts to change. <clears throat> he says, "You know, I I made a mistake here. Let me go back and get her." And then sees her being attacked by wolves and actually does something heroic. Hmm. And then in response, that shows her that he's not just this complete jerk who who's just an angry guy. Because um, she's like, oh, he actually, you know, sacrificed something to save me. I'm not going to leave him. Because she she gets on, she goes to get on the horse, and then she looks back, and she's like, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to return. Now, 
this is the one thing the live action did that made more you sense. Need to, you need to get up. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, it, yeah. She otherwise she just like eats him up onto the. <laughs> I mean, you, you, your your mind can let you believe that it was like a Aragorn and his horse, where like the horse like leans down and like nudges its way. Yeah, yeah. Underneath it, it, it's, like, it's one of those bodies. things. Like it, it, it but it, it, I mean, doesn't, it doesn't change fine. anything. But doesn't but but so so then all. and so then that's the point where that's the point where their relationship pivots, where she starts caring for him and he's like, oh, you know. So that his sacrifice for her changes her mind about him, and then when she cares for him, that changes his mind about her, and then they start to that's the then that's the whole something that it wasn't there before, and they actually start to form a relationship, and that culminates with him realizing that he's in love with her, and saying, "Oh, your father's sick. I'm going to let you go, even though it means I'm going to die." And you have to understand, like, like she's established as a character who is not happy in her town. She she's reading about. She's literally reading about – she's like, this is where she meets Prince Charming, but she doesn't discover that it's him until chapter three. Like, that's in the initial song. Like, she's reading a story about that, and ironically, like, that's kind of how her story ends up, mm-hmm. and that's what she's seeking. So w- when she's there, yes, she's a prisoner in this castle, but very quickly that turns into, hey, you get to stay in this luxurious room with a library bigger than your entire town, and with this enchanted silverware is going to sing to you for your dinner, and like she's in love with that, like she can't get enough of it. Like you can see it in her character, and as she's as she's absorbing it, that it changes from I'm a prisoner to I can't leave this place. Like this is this is amazing. And in fact, her only motivation to leave is to help her dad. I would venture to say that if her dad didn't exist, she'd be perfectly fine to stay in the castle forever. And that yeah. scene after they and dance, she would have been like, "Yeah, perfectly happy yeah. here." And the the big moment for that, which is kind of ruined in the remake, is when he shows her the library. Yeah, he's like, "Oh, you know, what can I offer you?" You know, he presumably has wealth and and things, all this. But he's like, "What would she want? She wants." Books, knowledge, that's what yeah. she wants. And so she, he takes the library, it's a big surprise. Whereas in the remake, if I'm remembering correctly, he they just started arguing about books. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, oh, I'll prove it to you. And then walks into the library. Like, just they just kind of wander into the library. Yeah, like he like doesn't think it's a big deal. Um, yeah, no, I mean, okay, it, 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 it's an obvious point that like she starts off as a prisoner. But it is like, it's a tale, you know? Like it's a tale about like like certain characters play certain roles in, in the tale. And I think her position there was you you can understand how she would ultimately be happier with something like that with being in an enchanted castle with a prince who's secretly a beast and she has to love him to turn him in like that's a fairy tale ending for somebody who's she she didn't know that part sure but she's like she's a character that exists in a fairy tale movie who really wants a fairy tale to happen to her i don't want to get nitpicky with like disney movie like you know what i mean like it's it I, yeah, I get I, what it's trying I, to I, do. I, so I legitimately like the time period, maybe maybe if you were trespassing on somebody's property, it was proper etiquette to throw them in jail. Well, I mean, so this is this I one mean, of the things like where in your we... own personal jail? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like Great, I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how jail, 17th century France worked where if oh, you had a wait, castle and somebody was Craig's personal jail. Is this legal? I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, I mean, it's a little sussy. But, but yeah, again, little if, you sussy. Were, if you were trying to nitpick, not that I think this is important, maybe that was the common practice at the time that if you were on, not to say that this is a good thing, but if you were <laughs> trespassing into somebody's castle, they could be like, yeah, we have a dungeon here and that's where you're, like, you're not allowed to just And I agree in. with that. R- right. And then her essentially coming and saying, hey, I just want to barter for, for his captivity. Mm-hmm. Um, he's sick. Let me just take his place. I mean, it's her offering to be there. And right. very quickly, that turns into not a hostile situation. And very quickly, she kind of loves the place. I, I wouldn't say, like, that that's Stockholm Syndrome. I wouldn't say she's, like, fiending to get back home to hang out around the people that she says she can't wait to leave all the time. And that You think her current situation was better than her, the town, even though she that's, had her qualms I, that, about the that's town. That's not the ar- necessarily the argument for whether it's, it's not, Stockholm it's not Syndrome external. or not. It's not external. It's not, like, my, my perspective of it. It's, like, what would she want? Is kind of like what I'm getting okay. at. I I wouldn't even I don't think that's even necessary to go that far to to, to say that it's not yeah, Stockholm d- syndrome because yeah. again they, they develop an actual relationship. Again, Stockholm syndrome is like you just you're you're stuck with your captor for so long that you start to see their point of view. That's not what's happening here. They're both changing as people. Right, like like right? he's changing more they're, than they're, she they're is. In an fact, actual I wouldn't even say she changed at all. Like mm-hmm. Stockholm syndrome is you changing to the point of view of your captive, not your your captor realizing that he's an idiot, mm-hmm. realizing he's a monster and being changed by the person he's captured. Like that's yeah. that's the beauty of the story is that she could have left. Right, she, right. She had so the it's, opportunity it's to Stockholm leave Syndrome would dead. be like Gaston shows up and's like, we're here to save you, Belle. And Belle's like, yeah, I want to stay here, actually. I like it here. 
versus this is he says go, go even though free. I know I'm going to die. Like you're free to go mm-hmm. because your dad needs you. Yeah. Maybe that's what the modern dating scene needs. <laughs> What? Imprisonment. Stockholm Syndrome? Imprisonment. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's what I've been this missing. <laughs> this, this, that, that's what I've been missing, that's, apparently. Um, yeah. Just, just, I just, can I, now, can I can I say a point that might transition us nicely to the live action? Yes, sure. please. Hit us. So Transition us. It was obviously longer, Ugh, right? So long. Uh, okay. Very I, obviously I, longer. I would say very obvious. I looked because the very first, the, ver- the, the animated one, the opening is the Provincial Life song, right? Yeah. That's just like the first... But there's the there's like the little bit of narration, mm-hmm. and then the provincial life, and then it's the rest of the movie, right? Mm-hmm. The end of the provincial life song in the remake was 25 minutes in, woof, which is Woof. a third of the runtime of the original. I was just like, Continue. please okay. make it end. Thought. Please so make it end. Here's thought. my thought, and I'm going to try to relate it to last week talking about the Little Mermaid live action, which was significantly longer than the original, Ugh. and we all kind of agreed it was all fluff, right? It was yes. only longer because it was fluff. And I know you guys are going to say, oh, there's fluff for this no, no, one no. too. But I think, I legitimately think they added scenes in the live action that made me buy in a little bit more. I think I, I can't even understand that. Yeah. I, I think the beginning scene with the Enchantress, did they need it? No, maybe not. But I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was good. Okay. The scenes where it shows how Belle's mother died from the bubonic plague. <laughs> I kind of liked that as an enhancement to the story. What What about her and her mother's like thing? How did that add to like? Because for me, that was one of the most like I think the audience almost forgot about it most of the time. Where you're like, all right, she had a mom. Who, what about that drew drew you in? Because for me, that was I I just thought it helped me sympathize sympathize with Belle a little bit more. So his ability to travel anywhere in the world at, at any, any time, time apparently. and then they're just like, "Hey, let's do this once to see your mom and then we'll forget about this little tool ever." I mean, I thought I thought it grew them together. I thought that their story was more fleshed out in the live action. I thought that there were scenes that wasn't in the original that were in the live action that I saw the progression a little sure. bit better. From uh, what, for captor, and... captive to lovers, there was scene, even like little tiny scenes, lovers? even little tiny scenes where Beast is getting ready and he's like chipping it, he's like clipping his horns and like they're helping him like. But they had that the original. Stuff. Had the original, it was okay. just shorter. Yeah, I, I I liked, I liked it. Okay, <laughs> like okay. the extra. Let me tell you why I enjoyed wrong. it. There was there was dialogue between them too where they were kind of relating that they're both kind of like weirdos. I kind of okay. appreciated I, that. So, before I go all in on how much I hated it, go all in. I will I say, like no, no, I, I will say, I, I actually, I liked the thing of, of, of Bell's found a fellow book lover. Right. Mm-hmm. I kind of like that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of like, they're both well educated. Um, and so he's like, okay, I will say they were only reading English books. <laughs> okay. This is set in France. There was nothing French about anything. There were zero <laughs> French like things. A myriad of like British and accents and then thing. some French accents. And you're like, all right. No, there was like two. <laughs> it was like, it was Lumiere and the, um, the, the, the feather the duster. duster. Yeah. Or whatever her name was. Yeah. The duster. Um, her name was like Swiffer or something. It was literally like feather wet duster. Palmette. <laughs> <Swiffer. laughs> <Yeah. Swiffer. laughs> yes. Wet jet. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. And that was, that was one thing, like subtle thing they changed is in the original Lumiere is just like a playboy. Yeah. But in this one, he was with. Feather Duster Girl. No, he's with Feather Duster Girl in the original. He's a playboy. What do you yeah, he's he's clearly a indicates, more of a yeah, he player, clearly indicates that he 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 just like playing around with some of the yeah. maids of the castle. That he's flirting with her, but it's not necessarily they're not necessarily a, an item. Um, I think yeah, it's a slightly different dynamic. I think. So if I agree, okay. I'll explain how these things work after the. So this is a, when a man meets a woman. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right, guys. But I just thought that it was a little bit more of like a relationship in the first. But I, I can understand. I can understand that. Yeah. Okay. But so, yeah. The the. I really hate what they did with Bell's character. And so, first of all, and she and now, like a robot I, I the don't. Whole time she was oh, oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, dude, the that songs were unbearable. That was so I'm bad. So sorry. Especially Provincial Life was the worst. Yeah, Provincial Hang Life on, was, I, I was. I got it. Bye. I got it. And, um, and she comes in talking like this. Wait, Greg, how do I get the FX to work? Um, it's on me. So, this is, this is actually how uh, Emma Watson sounded the whole time. Come on, saying, guys. Yeah, I actually showed them me so they can, they can see. 
Maybe I had my I had my Emma Watson goggles on. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. How do I, how do I do it to a different mic? It, uh, you had to do that before the show started. Oh, okay. So they're, they're set to certain mics. Okay. They might all be set to mic this one. one. No, here we go. Nope. They're all set to mic one, but the audience can't see me, dude. You change the camera view. No, I don't want to. Well, then, then it, there's, there's a lot of buttons there's over no here. Humor. Okay, it's kind of overwhelming. Yeah, I know. I did, I did, I briefed Nathaniel for like seven minutes, and now he's producing. So this is actually an incredible. He's doing job. a great job. Yeah, yeah, he's doing a great job. Considering that I spent seven days doing it, man, I really sound like the beast. That was. Uh, oh, I like this one. All right, the audience is hating us right now. <laughs> that um, sorry, I'm one. playing around. Okay, but, but anyways, but the, but the point back is, yeah, to Emma Watson. The, the um, yeah, the auto tune was egregious on the first song. I, it sounded like T Pain. It was really yeah, bad, was, and she was the only one who was that auto tune. Oh. <sighs> but anyways, I you know I'm not going to brag you that. Okay, I mean it, this it might be the hottest point. take I've had on the podcast. Let's hear it. We needed like an intro. With, like, I don't <laughs> think she works as Belle just because I don't think she's like. She's not hot. She's not hot enough. She's not oh hot. Oh my! I, I, no, no. Gosh, I thought dude. the same exact thing. What are okay, you guys no, talking listen, about? Listen dude, to this. That's, listen to this. I'm gonna I back, might storm off. I'm gonna, hey, I'm gonna back this I take up. I'm gonna off. back this take up big time. That's okay? insane. Listen, listen. Her name. Her name means beauty, right? She, it's literally Beauty and the Beast because Bell means beauty. Even in the animation, we all talked about. It, we're like, she's kind of the hottest out of, out of the. Out of I don't freaking, know those those blonde triplets. Okay, the blonde triplets were not hot in the live action. I'd like to because no, they, they, they were all hideous. Everyone, really everyone, I will, I will say, everyone but Belle in the village was hideous. Yes, yes. but intentionally so. But but, anyway, but it's just like she's not. She, uh, Emma Watson to yes, me looks this like isn't a shot at Emma Watson. Just, she doesn't look like she, a, a, she, like a knockout beauty, which is she, what I imagine. Belle she looks be. like a cute college aged girl. I don't I don't even know how to say it. Like she looks kind of like a cute nerdy girl, which I know you're gonna be like, oh, that's Belle. She's cute and nerdy. No, but she's exactly she's she's say. like drop dead gorgeous though. Like that's the kind of idea they're singing about. How she's so much more radiant than anybody else in the town. And when I saw it, I'm like, yeah, she kind of just looks like another town person. Oh man, that's that's I, it hit horrible. me right off the bat. And I'm that's glad horrible. you pointed it out. It's not because Emma Watson's a hideous person. She's no, I don't think she's a far more beautiful person I than think any she's, of us. Yeah, but, but hmm. she just doesn't like. I would expect somebody to play that role to be like. Okay. She walks so, in a room and people want to sing about like her. Who? Radiant. Yeah, yeah. So that's no, no, no. That's a great question. No, no. Liam brings up a great question. We can't just complain. We have to actually try to solve. Give the me problem. someone recast. that I can frame. Who that would I you can recast? Frame. Who are you thinking then? Okay. Well, when was this done? Uh, because the age twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen. Um, so it's not that it's. it's I, it feels like this was came out a million years ago. It was only six years ago. Yeah, six yeah. years ago isn't that far away. Which is um, not that far away, but it feels like this one came out. This was like the one of the first ones they did. Blake Lively. I don't know who that is. She's blonde. Next question. It was Emma Watson has been blonde. At <laughs> you can tie She's your hair. D- 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 no, I everyone gonna, knows I, Blake Lively is blonde, is blonde. I'm sorry. I know we have audience members that are probably Rachel girls. McAdams. They would disagree with you. I think Emma Watson is better looking than Rachel Guys. <laughs> People are going to be like, I don't oh, think... great. Another podcast of guys. Yeah, look at these. Look at these. Yeah. This is the okay, male let's, gaze. Let's, let's... The male gaze strikes we can't go again. On too much longer. Unbelievable. I can't okay. believe these guys. We're, Whatever. We're, <laughs> what about like... We're but, but, Scarlett Johansson. And this is, and this, or not Scarlett this is the Johansson. Thing. Angelina Jolie, maybe when she was younger. Yeah, to, to, young to, Angelina Jolie is just okay, like... I get it. Because Emma Watson is an extremely talented to actor. Not a talented singer, sorry. I wouldn't say she's a talented singer. I think it's fair. And, it, and this isn't nitpicking that she's like, well, no, you're not hot enough, next person. It's just because the role itself has to be like, we need to get somebody who's like stunning, and I just don't necessarily think that she's she's stunning. Like, <laughs> sorry, I, I we think have that she's a, a, she's a very average, pretty we have girl. Chat. Sarah yeah. Conscience says Emma Watson not being beautiful is the most uninteresting thing I've ever Thank heard. Thank you, Sarah. Jail all of you. Thank you. No, not me, Sarah. <laughs> I agree with you. It's ins- it's an insane take. You guys are oh, so. Wait, in no, hold on, hold on. Pause. We're not saying yeah, she's not are. beautiful. I just like her type of beauty. Yes. I think doesn't fit the role of Belle I think it, for me. Her, I literally think it perfectly fits. It's, it's if I were to be like, no who would idea. Play Belle, who would play it's Belle? not. It's oh, not even. It's not Belle. a judgment on women at all. It's just the idea that she has to look different than these townspeople, and she maybe maybe it was just the makeup. Jo- I don't know, but she looked. She looked like a very milk toast version of, of Emma Watson. Maybe I could just say it like that. Like she, she did not look. So so you're saying look, she wasn't bringing her A game. May, maybe that's it. I don't know. Like I don't personally. Her fastball I'm not, wasn't on. I'm not personally like like. Like enamored with Emma Watson, I think she's a perfectly f- decent looking person. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't go through like the list of like actresses out there and be like, who's drop dead gorgeous? Like who's beautiful? And again, beauty okay. is in the eye of the beholder. Now, this is a very I, I subjective say, conversation. I'm not saying that she's not attractive. It just seems like for a character whose whole mo is that she is beautiful, we would need to be like 
a model looking person walking through a town full of very basic looking people and Emma Watson just looked kind of normal she looked like Hermione Granger it's a very nerdy character like people loved Hermione I I, 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 I think Emma, Emma Watson's yeah, great yeah but that's but a different kind of character that's not a that, <laughs> she's, 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 she's the opposite that's of the bell like a range though I think she has range not I'm vocal saying. range though <laughs> <I'm>, well, no <laughs> no okay. I, I, listen, I'm with but, you on that okay but 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 let me get back to my point that so that was just that was just a and you know what that I can I can take a step back and say okay I think you cast a different looking person for that role, whatever. I can get past who's in that role. Here's what I hated about what they did with her character, which is nothing to do with her or her acting. They made her the inventor. So in the original, Maurice is the inventor. Yeah. Right? And Bell comes home after the first song, and she's like, can you hand me that doohickey? And he, she hands it to him, and he, he's working on the, the big invention. That's why he goes to the fair. I don't even remember why he went to the fair this time. I mean, he he had the music box that was like... He has like that song that he sings for two seconds about how that's that's like how you capture a memory is in music. I mean, it was it was, it was interesting. Yeah. That it lasted like thirty seconds. And yeah, I was so, kind of like, so, oh, so, that could so gone longer. In this one, Maurice was an artist, right? Mm-hmm. And Bell was always the Bell was you know she invents she invents like the the washing yeah the machine, washing machine the other thing yeah. and. And um, the townspeople are just like the townspeople. Are, the townspeople are just dude, like they're just awful. You're teaching a woman to read. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> it's like out of nowhere, these townspeople are just but the worst like, human beings on earth. And you're like, wait, where is this coming yeah. from? But like, it's like you could see in in you know 18th century France where there's not a widely spread education. That education is generally reserved for very wealthy people. Yeah. That when there's this you know peasant girl who who's really into books, people are like, yeah, she's a bit of a weirdo. Right. That's not normal for the common folk. Right. Whereas in this one, it was definitely like a 20th century or 21st century attitude of where, where Maurice's like, oh, you're so progressive. And Emma Watson's like, yes, I am. And it's like <laughs> people in 18th century France did not have that same attitude. And this is one of the things that a lot of historical, you know, things set in the history is like, you, you got to kind of understand, you know, Wait. how people would act at that time Wait for it to even be slightly realistic. Are you telling me that 17th century France? Is not as diverse as it was in the live action Diversity Island. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't notice. I didn't. That, I didn't notice it. I, really? I wasn't paying that I much just, attention. I felt I, like the again, opening I got scene so bored, I started where doing was, my laundry. It was like it was like a giant party. It was literally just like half and half. And I'm like, I'm like, and everybody's talking with a British accent, but it's supposed to be France. And I'm like so confused. And again, yeah, none of these like that never. It can never like ruin a story for me. It's like it's about the story. That, yeah, and you yeah. can have whoever yeah, yeah, you yeah. want plugging in. But it is. It is. It's. It's, it's, it's silly. It's is what definitely it is. silly, and it's like it draws you out for a couple seconds to be like, oh, like all of these interracial couples happening in like seventeenth <laughs> century, century France. France. You're like, like that makes you know, a lot of sense. In, in, you know, in like sixteenth, seventeenth century what Europeans were doing <laughs> with black people. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's not good. Yeah. You don't, I don't They're think like you want to do never that. never happened. <laughs> I don't think you want to go there. So uh, it's, like, it's not a good Maurice, look, guys. Maurice's story felt pretty significantly different from the original to the live yeah, action. That he was change. way less crazy. He lost a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> and he, True. He got taller. Hey, he got way taller. This is thin privilege. Which That's all I'm saying. That's something I said is Tell him. Maurice... Tell him. I would love to see the wife because if Maurice is procreating Belle in the original, yeah, the you, wife he, is a smoke show. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's so, not bringing a lot. Okay, so you, yeah, he actually said that in the original, yeah. and then in watching the live action, they showed young Maurice and like he didn't look that bad, man. Young yeah, Maurice yeah, yeah. is he's kind of a stud. Yeah, he's a stud. They didn't but show it, young Maurice in the in the animated one, so you don't know he might have been a stud. And then he just put on a few pounds. He got old. Like it happens. Yeah. I mean, look at look at Whatever. Arnie now versus Arnie. Sure. In Terminator, <laughs> Arnie. Um, yeah, let's compare Arnie, Maurice yeah. to Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing it right now. Uh, Comparing to Jakob, even maybe. <laughs> Jakob wrote in again. Really? The, yeah. The Jakob we can, wrote, we can okay. read that one at some we can't point. Read that one. Okay. Um, but Maurice, I'm just hoping oh, you guys picked up on the, this. Maurice was way less crazy in the live yeah. He action. wasn't crazy. In he the, was just like a kind of a normal guy that was getting like gaslit by the right. entire town, pretty right. much. Yeah. So and and so and this is another thing when when uh, so when she's at the castle when Emma Watson at the castle, um. And he, they're doing the. He's asking her to come to dinner. She's like actively trying to escape, which is completely different from. So they took like yeah. everything they had. They're like, oh, we just have to make her more proactive. Yeah. Right. So it, it, it I don't know. It, it, it completely that, kind of changed her character in a way that I didn't like. Well, that's my whole point. The story, the initial story, is not about Belle. Like she plays a role in a bigger story. The character you're supposed to follow along with is the Beast. You're supposed to relate to feeling feeling the weight of your own poor decisions you relate relate to having having your 
the ugly parts of you revealed to you and that being uncomfortable and and not knowing how to deal with that and, and being faced with it. And it's almost like it's like being a, a paraplegic and and sympathizing with the fact that maybe your significant other is there caring for you. And you're like, would I really want this for you? Because internally, do I think I could love somebody who is paraplegic? And so he's sitting there like, well, yes, I'm upset that I'm obviously a beast, but I don't even think people could love me. So I'm not I'm just going to give up completely because I'm not going to waste my time trying to get somebody to because I couldn't picture loving somebody like this. And so she plays the role of somebody who can come in there and despite wrongfully being abducted, despite, uh, you know, being mis mistreated, uh, she sympathizes with, with him and she cares for him. And, and there's enough, there's enough built up with her character to under, to, so you can understand why she's not like in love with this town and now she's locked away and crying every night. She's like out searching for adventure. And you know, we've already explained this, but but in, in the live action one, it's as if they wanted to make the story about her. And and so they tried to develop something. And I, I have no idea what it was. Because she still had zero character development. Her, her character development, like, tell me, tell me where she started and tell, tell me where she ended. She's the same character. They just they were just like, we have to make her more interesting. She has to be an inventor. She has to be super savvy and trying to get out of the castle. You know, she like in and I just I mean I, I don't think that really affected it too much for me. I yeah, wasn't I, distracted. I, I was hearing. Like, I thought I would, it was more I like they just they just kind of like ruined uh, Marisa's character, and also right. the, the whole thing of um, she she there it's that one moment, and I really do think it changes Belle's character more than you think it would. But in the original, she's like, "I'll take his place," and that's the end of it. In this one, she's, "I'll take his place," and then like leans over and is like, "I'll escape." And then like tricks them. So right. yeah. Nice. So so in the original, she's like, oh, if I if I can get this switch, then I can escape on my own. You know. So her plan is always to get out of the castle. Right. Whereas in the original, she never. She's like, this, she I, I will stay it, here for the rest of yeah. my life, but it, I'm willing it, to do that it, for my dad. It makes the sacrifice yeah. seem seem bigger. Yeah. Because she's doing it with the understanding that she won't ex escape. That it's yeah. that it's for life. Yeah. That's something that I didn't I didn't really it didn't hit me either because like. If you're a dad, he's old, man. He's an old guy. He's <laughs> right. He doesn't. He doesn't got a whole lot of life left. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you, but it sounds Bell's very a, dark the way you said it. I, I don't Just know if we kill have him, any I mean, old Come on, man. And, I don't know if we had any uh, old viewers. <laughs> Liam um, wants the last song to be "Kill Maurice," but like instead of "Kill the you Beast." You know what I mean, though. You know what I mean. <laughs> wow. If you're a, if you're Maurice, that's a hot There's take. no way I'm. I'm not doing this. Not that he necessarily had a choice, but no. like. We, Belle's young. She has so much life ahead of her. Well, he does say that. He he says that. Well, yeah. I mean, in in the original, he's he's begging her not to. He's, yeah. He's like, no, don't do this. Don't like like that's fine. Leave me. And in the beast, gra he's like, oh, you want to switch? All right. And then he grabs him by the arm and takes him out of the castle and throws him. Mm. Yes. I yeah. The, I'm not saying no. Okay. <laughs> I'm saying I think the, the I just didn't saying, mind the way the live action spun that. I, like, is kind of what okay, I'm trying so, to get. At. So, so the most for me the most. Disple like the most displeasing parts of the live action one and this is just all encompassing the music was just bad at every Ugh, level like just, there wasn't even bad music they, they slowed music. down every single and song it was like and, and it was just it was just sung poorly every every mm -hmm. song had little twists to it that just made it worse the gaston song was an atrocity uh and in in, in and i'm going to contrast this with the little mermaid to where I thought the three banger songs in Little Mermaid, yeah, they, they were other than the unscathed. fact that Under the Sea didn't actually show the fish like playing the harps <laughs> mm -hmm. and everything, which mm -hmm. which defeated the purpose, those were actually sang perfectly. I mean, like the songs sounded great. I, I would listen to those on Spotify just like I would listen to the originals. Even Scuttlebutt. The I would I was just talking about the originals that were redone. <laughs> this one, all of the original songs were butchered, and the original songs, in my opinion, I didn't talk about this too much about the original. Those songs are fire. I'm sorry. Like, they're all good, and they all play a specific role in telling the story, which makes them even more important. And and most most songs in these Disney movies do, right? Like, there's some purpose to why they're singing about something, right? Under the Sea is to show Ariel, you know, why it's so amazing here and why you shouldn't want to leave. Her singing about being part of your world is expressing how she feels. So that's kind of the aim of these. But I would even say that the songs in the original uh, Beauty and the Beast – had more impact on the story. And, and, and I've already mentioned this, that something that wasn't there before, in my opinion, is like such a beautiful display of both of them starting to feel for each other. That's like not displayed in a whole lot of other Disney movies. Um, and then Beauty and the Beast, the actual main song that they dance to is, is just like, 
is beautiful. You know, it's it, it's like the lines like uh, it's like learning you can change uh, fi- or finding you can change, learning you were wrong. Yeah, like those are just such powerful words that like it's about it's about mainly one person growing, but it's about two people learning to love each other and one of them changing from a horrible person into somebody who can be loved. Can I just touch on that? That song that was, is incredible. That was something that I, I didn't like. Okay, I, I've got a list of things that I they changed that I didn't like. And this is one of the things like... I didn't even get to my second thing. I know, I know, but but I, 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 this is germane. Um, so they actually made change the Beast. So in the original, the Beast is just kind of a dick and everyone knows he's a dick. Yeah. In, the, in this one, it was Daddy Issues. Yes. Yes. Like, like yes. Uh, they, they change it to daddy issues, yes. and then the the servants are all like, "Oh no, we deserve to be cursed." And they don't really touch on this on on like the fairness <laughs> of the whole castle being cursed in the original. It just kind of is. They don't act, right. they don't address it at all. Which and in this one, fine. in this one, Belle's like, "You're all slaves," and, da, 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 da. and they're like, "No, no, no, it's our fault because we didn't do a good enough job raising him after his dad <laughs> wasn't was was an ass." And I'm like, "What?" And so they're kind of, kind of. Trying to shift it so that oh no, it, the beast isn't bad. It was just his environment, and if he right. just was in a different environment, which and, Bell's providing, he'll be different. Like no, no, no. In the original, the beast is an ass, and he has to change, and he does. In and this one, he, yeah, it, it's similar, but it's it's muted by the fact that it's like no, no, he's this way because of his right. dad. It's like come well, on. And and that was gonna be my second point was that I think that the second that the remake did a huge disservice to that through line, which is him and his development. Like I thought it was. It was muted, like muted is a good word because it was still there, right? Like he still had to be loved in order to, to like the, like the broad story of him needing to be loved, though he's a beast to break the spell is there. It's present, but him actually doing the changing internally and becoming a different person is, is, is completely different. Like you didn't get those scenes where he chases Belle off and then he's sitting there and he puts his head down where, you know, he just like. He, he just feels trapped. Like, he feels like he's his own worst enemy. He feels like he's chasing everything off that could be good, and he doesn't think there's any hope. Like, you, you can you can feel all of that in the original to where the live action, again, stuff like that, where they were like, well, he wasn't that bad, so that's why you should love him. And in reality, it's like, no, he he was a bad guy. It's a redemption story. That's what makes it beautiful, right? Like, like mm-hmm. he, he was a horrible guy that was revealed to him, and he's responding to that in a negative way of hopelessness because he doesn't understand what it's like. And it takes somebody else outside of himself to love him, to change him. That's a beautiful story mm-hmm. as opposed to, no, he's good. He was corrupted by society. Some old white man. I don't know. I disagree. I disagree. I think he was just as much of a dick in the live action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the, he, yes. the point was that he a reason, which I don't think changes anything no, really you no. don't think that you don't think it changes the the own the He's responsibility bearing yeah but in, in the in the, True, in the original it is 100 percent his fault and everybody right. knows it is his fault mm-hmm. and he's the one who has to fundamentally change and then by making it Oh, he just he's that he's just that way because of his dad means it's not really his fault completely. Like, yes, he still bears responsibility for his actions right. as as evidenced by him being cursed. But then the, the the way the servants talk about it, they say, Oh, we're also responsible because we didn't do enough to bring him up the right way or whatever. And it's like, no, no, no. He's one hundred percent responsible for his actions, whether his dad was a dick or not. He's right. completely irrelevant to his actions. And like in like the people well, I agree. I agree with what you just said, but, but I, to that point, I don't think it makes a difference. But because of what my you whole said. point is, if you're going to add something to the story, right? Like you're taking this pre-existing story, it is functionally the same story. Like we'd all agree, this is mm-hmm. we're telling the same story. And if you're sitting there scratching your head, saying, "What are things we can change?" In my opinion, you should not touch that through line. That's that's like a beautiful character arc and what makes the story. And in my opinion, the changes they made were in the wrong direction. So it's not necessarily that it ruined it. You weren't sitting there like, oh, he's a great guy. But adding in little droplets like, well, it's not really his fault, but keep watching, is like, well, you're just hurting, you're hurting the arc that you're making it less beautiful and less amazing. If I only watched that one and never seen the original, I mean, I think we'd all agree, like, we'd probably think, oh, that's a solid story. But after watching the original, you're like, well, you just, you just, took us you took an amazing story and then turned it really mediocre so yeah. so now I'm just, I, you didn't need to make those changes you definitely didn't need to add an hour to this movie oh but you God. chose to and with those with that hour instead of moving the story in a adding new things which i agree with you i think their their joint love for books was an interesting addition and like like i was actively thinking i'm like oh i hope there's more i hope there's more like positive additions because you can do things where you're like hey this it's it's not trying to change the 
the foundation of this story, but let's add some fun elements to it. Let's let's give so and so a little more character depth for whatever reason. Yeah. That's cool. But in my opinion, well, the majority of the changes were humanizing Nafu. Like, what was the point? Like, like, that character is an absolute bimbo in the original. Like, he's a complete idiot. <laughs> they, made go. Go. They, they made him a good guy. Here we go. They made him a good guy in the end. In the end, he just yeah. turns on Gaston, in which this, he in never this one, would do he's, in the original. He's like... I mean, I'm sorry, but he's just like he's a petty gay guy. Like he's a, he's in love with Gaston, and by the end, he gets fed up with go. the fact that Gaston doesn't love him. Like I don't I don't mind at all that you're making him a gay guy, but the idea that that he also was good the whole time and it was just it was just Gaston corrupting him. I was like, well, why? It's so pointless. Like he is such a worthless character. Mm-hmm. E- even by the end, him turning to good, you were like, what? Can, what 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 substance is there that you can latch onto and be like, wow, he really had to go through things? You're just like he's just a random guy who's in love with this one dude who didn't love him back, and because he didn't love him back, now he essentially betrayed him. Uh, who, who, who? So so at best, he was a terrible person to gain the affection of a terrible guy, and he was willing to be that terrible person. And if if, if Gaston was like, hey, screw it, let's just be gay lovers, then he would have been a terrible guy forever. And so he's like, "Well, I'm not going to because he doesn't love me anymore." And I'm like, "Like, I don't know. Like, like that seems well, like a super empty." I didn't, I didn't care for Gaston and what's his name, Lefou, Lefou, Lefou in either movie. So oh, I, I, really, see, I don't see, have a strong. See, that's where like like they're they are hysteri- like they are the only. I uh, see. I would agree with you that I think that the Little Mermaid had better comedy in it. I think for maybe, sh- for maybe sure. the physical comedy was just like hit a little harder with with just the animation of. Of um, the animals, flounder, of, like a flounder and Sebastian, so. uh, and Scuttle was great. Whereas in this one, the, the there wasn't as much as that. But I would say that Gaston was like he's so like, he's like he's just absurd. Like I mean, his song is just it hits so hard, and just his buddy who's just like constantly yeah, hyping it's up. Just he's like, like his, he's his hype man. Dude, it's so great. He's like you got to pull yourself together, man. You got this, man. Like it's just it's, it's just it's such a great song. It's such a it's like, drunk it is, frat boy is like a, patting each other on the back. It's, it's hysterical. hysterical. And so their whole dynamic is great. The song "Kill the Beast" is like way better than I remembered. Where again in the live action. All, God, all the songs are just so bad. Everybody's Ugh. auto-tuned. I mean, Emma Watson, small. again, God bless her heart, even if she was the hottest girl on the planet, she just can't sing. It, it's nothing against her. It, it, it's not It's not like I'm attacking her I character. Yeah. Ta- she, talk to Russell Crowe in Les Mis. He can't do it yeah, either. It she, doesn't I mean, work. She, you just got somebody who couldn't sing the songs, and so it's, it's, it's seriously, they should have had the keyboard artist doing the auto tune somewhere in the background just to be like, well, he's an actual <laughs> character. And it would have, it would have actually, because <laughs> nobody was believing that she was singing that. It's like, level up town, She has to be better at singing than that. Is she really? Dude, dude what, what do you she mean? She strikes me as the total package. Oh I'm my, like, oh, okay, this so girl now, could definitely so now sing well. Liam too. has just revealed his hand. Uh, he was just going in pre assuming <laughs> that great, she was great. perfect can in you, every can way. You give us, can you hit us with that auto tune again? I didn't even hear a word she said out of her mouth. I was just staring at her the whole movie. So I don't really, <laughs> oh okay, don't now, know. okay. Right, so now, gone too now far. we see why Liam. <laughs> Like that movie, and didn't didn't was like, or I guess it was mid because he was just staring at Emma Watson the whole time, not paying attention. To I, don't the movie. Use the word I was mid. doing my laundry, and I still picked up more of the movie than you did because you're just staring mid. at you Emma could Watson. Snap your fingers and make the original Belle a real person. Like 100, percent she's gonna be smoking on. She's gonna be way hotter than Emma Watson. I I have a fun <laughs> fact about Belle. I did some half-assed research, and I this stunned me. All right, you need to whole ass things. Um, someone can fact check me. <laughs> Belle is He's the doubling only. Down. <laughs> <laughs> Belle is the only brunette princess. There's no way you fact check. That's this. really you just ran through in your mind. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I actually no, believe I him. It's, it's funny because a lot of them are. This. There's a lot of blondes and there's a lot of redheads. Um, it depends on and there's who, black hair. It depends Moana. on, who, Moana, it depends on uh, who, you consider, who you consider Snow to be White. a princess because uh, technically wh- she's not a princess. She's she's a uh, right. peasant. Okay, well, well, in that case, then no. The the girl from um, Hercules pro- is also a brunette. But she's not the main Meg? character, Meg. though. Meg is. You know what I'm trying to say. She's the main character. Main Belle character? is not the main character of Beauty and the Beast. Oh. It is. It's not. <laughs> her, na- her name is. Her name isn't even in the title. <laughs> so if she's not a princess, so, but she is. Yes, a princess. it is. Beauty. Every, yeah. Her name literally. The definition means of her name. We would agree she's a princess, though. She's a Disney princess, hundred percent. Okay, 100%. so that's what I'm referring to. Is the girl from Hercules a Disney princess? No. As much as Belle is. 
No. <laughs> you're we, no. No. Well, actually, no, probably not. You're, you're actually probably no. right. No. Well, because at the end, she marries a prince, so she becomes a princess. Okay, so you're thinking more literally. Oh, I'm sorry. Were we just thinking not? <laughs> what were we thinking? Tell me. You know what I'm thinking. You have the OG princesses. I, I don't need to elaborate on it. I actually do think Snow that White, that Belle, Meg, Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella. That's I think, the OG. I think, I, think, I think Meg falls into that conversation. Like, if you had, if you had a picture with all the Disney princesses, I, I think Meg would be there. The girl from Hercules. Uh, those hips don't so. lie. I'm not gonna lie. I guarantee you, she would never be in any marketing. I mean, talk about one princess. who's not very attractive. Like, I just don't see Meg as being like coming out on the real end. Like, if she walked through the real portal, portal, mm -hmm. I think she'd look like a. Well, that's probably why she would Wouldn't snap be in on half. The marketing. Yeah, she's like, she's like a, a stiff breeze would roll by and she'd break and her spine. Really weird. Yeah, yeah. Geez, the, I mean, everything in that in that movie was weirdly proportioned, but <laughs> it was just the animation For style. Hercules. Yeah. It was like um, DC did a uh, uh, like a Flashpoint. Uh, animated movie and it was really good but the art style everyone looked like they were just like they were just the chunkiest possible version it's the chunkiest possible world everyone had like jowls out to here it was very weird mm -hmm. but it's like yeah i don't know hercules just had that weird art style where everything was not quite good so i was correct so i was correct sure at the end of the day i was correct and not that's, thinking, and that's a fun fact there you go that's fun yeah, fact. How, how did you put it not fact. not putting it literally the You're um right. I, I will. I will like. say. I will say that the movie was wrapping up. The movie was wrapping up, and I looked at the time. I was like, "There's 20 minutes left." But the, the credits are 20 minutes long. Yeah, I was the, real happy. Live action. 20 minutes of credits. So I guess technically Jeez. they only added 30 minutes because 20 <laughs> minutes of it was credits. I was like, "How? How is this possible?" There are so, so many, many credits. people to thank for an amazing movie. Apparently, oh yeah, yeah, an amazing movie. Um, I, I was trying to think of. Uh, there were a couple other things. Uh, oh, the, Gaston. So in the original, Gaston dies because he, he he goes to stab Beast and then he just slips off. Yeah, right. This one, the this the one, castle the, the just castle crumbles. just starts crumbling for some reason. I I, I thought I that all of that was just like is I didn't know if there was like a deeper message to be had there, uh, uh, but I just found it to be odd that he was just standing there and, the, and he was like about to take another shot with his gun and then the castle just like broke underneath him and he died. I'm like, is that supposed to have some significance? Because honestly, the addition, all the addition of stuff like. The, in my opinion, the lowest part of the movie where I was like, I want to turn this off and not podcast was was when he like him and Maurice are like traveling through the forest and he just like punches him in the face and leaves him to be dead. And yeah. then and then the Enchantress, because like, let's develop her character for no like mm -hmm. like what was she, she, Agatha. she was Agatha. She was useless. <laughs> she was useless. It was kind of weird. I actually had to think like at the end of the movie, I had to be like. Wait, was that supposed to be the enchantress? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, like, like she she shows up. She shows up and saves uh, what's his what's his butt, uh, Maurice. And then she's in the village. And at one point, somebody's like, "Hey, yeah, she was there." Was and like, he's like, "Hey, she's ugly. Don't listen to her." <laughs> and like, I was like, "Why do we care about that?" And I'm like, "Why understand. are we adding this?" Like, like that that would be a humorous thing to add into a song. Like, don't listen to her. She's mm -hmm. ugly. Like, because like that's a that's a that's a, like everybody would know that's a stupid thing to say. All right. Uh, I thought Marco, she was beautiful, by the way. Marco just jumped in the chat and uh, says, uh, original is infinitely better, but the song Evermore is better than any original song hot take. Oh, mm. uh, okay, okay. Well, well, this, well, this will get me to that song. Okay, because I I do agree that that is one of the few... I, well, again, we'll, we'll get through all these these live-action remakes, but so far, out of two, and, and in my memory, that is the only live-action remake song that I think added something to... to like the, like that that I would throw into the soundtrack of Disney songs, I think Evermore is an excellent song. Mm -hmm. I don't know that it did anything, and I mentioned this briefly. I don't think it does anything for the character, the story necessarily. Although the song is is great, so I would agree that the song is good. It's it's probably the best live action remake original song. But like, let's talk about what it's because we again we talked about it briefly. He's talking about how he's let her go. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole song. Like, although, like, like, and I know she'll never leave me, even though she runs away. So it's about her leaving, but him feeling satisfied with that. Whereas I don't think that's actually how he's feeling. I wouldn't use the word satisfied. Well, he would I, use that I, word I, in the song. My, my impression <laughs> Did of he it, say it in the song? No, he doesn't say satisfied. I, I, I don't, but a lot of sy synonyms getting. where he's like, where he's like, you're always going to be with me. Like, I don't know. Like, so my, I, my, I did not my impression that was it, of it was that he, he feel, felt like he won her heart. And so that even though he's letting her go, like he he still made that connection and that 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 connection that relationship that he made would always 
stick with him. That, that was the impression that I got. That still hurts, though. Well, oh no, no, it was. I mean, it wasn't like a happy thing. I think that was the whole point. It was. It was melancholy. It was him saying, yeah, that's, you know, that's I, I don't want to let her go. I just wish there were. But I'm part, still going like, to have these in, feelings. In, in my l- watch of it this time, I was. I was hoping that at the end or at some point he would mention how he's like, though he's crushed by it, like he kn- like he's happy. He's happy for her or something, because I think. At least in watching the original, that's how I felt. Like he was ultimately crushed by this thing. He loves her. He he, he mm-hmm. got into the point where he loved her, and he did something out of love for her. But that meant that he never got to see her again. So it's like as a, as a viewer and as a character, you're as as the character, you're feeling that and you're showing it. And as a viewer, you're experiencing it through that. And in singing that song, you're kind of like I think it it softens that blow a little bit. Yeah, I mean, and I'm I, looking at the lyrics, and it really just feels like. He had kind of, and it's part of the thing with his book talk where he's like, yeah. "Oh, I hate romances," because for him, it it doesn't seem believable or realistic that that you know he's like, "I can never love anyone," yeah, right. So this is all nonsense, and this is him. I rage against the trials of love, right? So he 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 realizes that oh, he's fallen in love, and so even though he he's 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 conflicted with the idea that she, he's letting her go, and she he's you know she's not going to stay with him, but then he's still hoping that. You know, I love her, and ho- I think she loves me, and so maybe she'll come back. Yeah, I, and I mean, I don't think that that song is necessarily misplaced completely. It just seemed like at a point in the story where, yes, Mark, you did, where where in the live action, I I felt like a, a depth of like well, I felt that decision super hard. I didn't feel it as much in this one. I, it's not that it ruined it. I just think that it was working in the opposite direction of what the story should have been working in while still being an amazing song and very catchy. And I was singing a lot afterwards. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, a, it's a great song. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, Mark, Mark was asking about the LeFou is gay discussion, and I'll just throw in my two cents. I don't, you know, I, again, I don't think it matters, like, for his character. Um, yeah. I mean, he's definitely not gay in the original. Yeah. That, was, that was one of the, yeah. the common so, debates so, is that, oh, yeah, he was always gay. Like, like he's, no, he's he not a gay he's, character. He's clearly just, a, and, and that's, to me, it's more of a, um, Hollywood just can't, cannot possibly imagine any intimate male yeah. or female friendships that are not sexual, which is just pathetic. Um, yeah, it, it definitely is like, it's I, a, I it's do a think, bummer because it takes away from what we just talked about, like like part of the humor and the charm of their relationship is that kind of frat boy, like, bro, you got this yeah. type deal, which is, there's some like, some stupid charm to that, which is, which is what makes his, their song so fun. Um, whereas it adds a different element when you know that one of them, and by the end you realize this to be true, that he's only doing it a hundred percent because he's infatuated with, with Gaston. Mm-hmm. That doesn't just make a character gay and nothing changes. That's like, Hey, we're going to change like their relationship completely. And, and yeah, to your point, Nathaniel, Hollywood really struggles in my opinion with making really great guy, guy friendships or girl, 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 girl friendships that aren't like, oh, there must have been some kind of element of, you know, sexual intimacy or mm-hmm. like a desire yeah. to have yeah. that. And I'm willing to say that the reason that he changes sides is because they're like, oh, we made him gay. Well, he has to be a good guy at the end now. I, I also <laughs> I thought 100% that. Believe, I also thought that. 100% believe because I'm right. like, if you choose a character to be gay, I mean, he is the butt of the entire movie. I mean, he is an idiot. He is the hype man for the biggest idiot in the whole movie. <laughs> like, he is, he's the worst. Like, like he's just, he's in the mud. He's, he's like posing as a snowman. He's, he doesn't do anything very well at all. And it does seem like low hanging fruit to be like, oh, like, let's make this beloved character gay. Okay? It's like, well, no, now we've got to make him have a redemption arc. Um, Which, I mean, I'm okay with, like, if they want to redeem LeFou. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Although like I said, it, it was just a waste it's of like, time. It's like, it it's like a it was, one second. It was useless. Like, oh, wait, Gaston's... Uh, oh, okay, I'm good now. <laughs> it's like, come on. You gotta... If you're gonna de- develop a character, you gotta actually stretch it. And so I thought with, with Gaston, um, they they kind of... So in the original, he's just like pure ass 100% of the time. <laughs> and, you know, he's conniving with the... Uh, with the um, oh, the in, the... The guy, the he looks so yeah, evil. The ghoul, the ghoul man. But yeah. Oh like, my god. Like, he's like the most evil looking character like in all of Disney. From Lord of the Rings. Yeah, he he's like menacing. His father, Jeez, look up man. right now. If, if you're if you're watching, look up. What about you? I wonder if I can pull like that, Prospector uh, from uh, Beauty and the Beast. Ghoul. B- Beauty and the Beast. Uh, did they? Prospector they did he have a name? Middleman. I don't know, but he like he's horrifying. He's just like this. He's like he's like. Oh, that sounds very evil. <laughs> he literally I, sounds like, I, like I, his, I, his I, name I, is like Monsieur Doc. Yeah. Monsieur 
Dog. Look, look them up, guys, and tell me if you don't shudder in your Monsieur seats Dog. or your beds or whatever you're um, watching this in. I so I want to make another point about yeah, comparing it to the Little Mermaid. I know we are, a big qualm of ours was how Flounder, Sebastian Scuttle, the non-human oh, characters, to go this way. okay, yeah, were like off-putting, yeah, to look at in the live action. Oh, no don't, facial don't, expressions. Don't tell me that you think. Right? Okay, keep going. No, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, with the yeah, oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. Start there. 100%. It's like off-putting. Yeah. Right? I didn't get that same off-putting feel. Really? The Beauty and the Beast. No, no, no. I, I was, there was a level of charm to them. So you thought. I still don't think it necessarily works from a general perspective, okay. the non-human turning into live action yes. across the whole Disney I, board. I, I, I think. Compared to Little Mermaid. Sure. This is way if, if it's a comparative thing, I, I don't think that's too. I don't think that's too offensive to say yeah. uh, that it's better than the Little Mermaid. I, I, and I think you're in agreement that there's just not really a right. Like the the the, the wardrobe lady yeah. was yeah. was he, hideous. Yeah. I mean, and and again, they can just slap a face on any of these characters in in the originals. Mm-hmm. Whereas these ones, even like Cogsworth, was just like. There were times that I was like, this is just too much going on. Yeah. He's got like all these gears and metallic whatevers. He, I mean, yeah, I would say it, it for me it was the same. It was just like these things don't need to be live action. On top of the beast looking like he should have been in the live action cats. Like that's where he should <laughs> no. that's where he belonged. That's where he belonged. It wasn't that bad. He could be singing, it was pretty bad. He could be singing with him. It, it was really bad. bad. He would like roar and his face was like <laughs> 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 like it moved, it like shuffled around, and yeah, yes, I I agree that it might not be as bad as the, as as the Little Mermaid, considering that the Little Mermaid they're dealing with actual animals that are like these yeah. things actually have faces. We can't make them look right, different. Right, right, right. Whereas in this one, I think there were some creative ways to like put a face on a There's clock. Still some w- uh, level of facial expression that them, they can some of them were pretty, use. Some of them were pretty lazy. <laughs> like Mrs. Potts was literally just we're just gonna draw. Oh my god! A I face. honestly, yeah. have I a, my child's gonna draw. I legitimately a thought that Mrs. Potts. Mrs. Potts and Teacup were more horror inducing than. <laughs> The other ones, because like at least the wardrobe, <laughs> it was like this weird like the curtains, and I was like, okay, I can distance myself. And just like these, <laughs> Chip had these shifty eyes, and I was like, he's gonna stab me in my sleep. Yeah. Chip also, also in the original, Chip is very much clearly a little kid. Like he doesn't get the romance thing. He doesn't get yeah. that. Also, uh, he didn't go back and save Belle. That was garbage. Yeah. Um, uh, but but in the new good. one, Chip is like acting way older. He's like a five year old kid, and he's acting. Like a way older kid in this movie. That was just something that bothered well, me when personally. He but turned into a human at the end. He looked older than five, in my opinion. You think so? I I I, I thought he looked like eight. I coach a lot of kids, um, so he could have been. Yeah, he could have been eight, got a good but he looked reason. really small. So he looked he looked like he was five or six to me. Okay, fair enough. Um, I'm curious to know what Jakob had to say about yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. Do we, do we get a do we get a do we get a letter from Jakob? Do you want to? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. He watched again, kind of. I told him that we were watching Beauty and the Beast. Oh, he he just he emailed you probably this time instead of writing your letter. Yeah, he emailed me. Okay, yeah. well, there we go. Um, do you want to read it? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll read. Uh, you gonna try? You gonna it's a little try? shorter than last week, but I I thought it was interesting. Where is the wait? Um, do we, do you have do you have that song loaded up? No, which one was it? Oh wait, I think I might have it. I might have it here. I got. I, I'll turn your Bluetooth up. <laughs> okay. That Jakob man, he's an interesting fella. <laughs> I got, I gotta say, um, tell you if Liam's the king of hot takes, uh, Jakob has like lava takes. Yeah, has like lava inferno, takes. inferno takes. Yeah, it's insane. Oh oh man, the man's gosh. out of control. It doesn't even. Sometimes I don't think he watches the movie. <laughs> the problem is, I think I'm gonna agree with all of his <laughs> takes. <here. laughs> that's 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 truly the, the 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 problem is, you know, you 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 either you either. You either die the Liam or you live long enough to see yourself become the Jakob. <laughs> the Jakob. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah, All right. It was great. Um, I also am very dyslexic. So this, will, this will add to the humor of, of the situation. Take it nice and slow. Wait, no. No, is, that's the funk. Come on, This Greg. is the funk. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it together. Here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> see what Jakob has to say. That's new. That's a new All right, one so we're not, not going to use that? the sound bite that because... That's sheesh. Uh, I, I don't There's know... There's so much of sheesh. Just, uh, just play some music in the background. I know. I'm trying to find the... Uh, Jakob's French, right? So he I, he would... Was he like French? He would, uh, yeah. I think, he, yeah. I think, yeah, oh, that was go. definitely the Part, accent. I, I partly. Was, here we go. So what? When Belle falls in love with the beast, we all praise it. 
as a Disney classic, but when I tried to marry my dog, I get arrested. <laughs> the, the only thing that I would have saved this overrated turd would be if Kate, Kate McKinnon played Gaston. <laughs> Two out of ten on both the original and live action. I'll always be watching Light Years on Blu-ray. <laughs> you mentioned that you're always watching Light Year on Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jakob. Thanks, Jakob. Really appreciate Didn't you. Didn't really bring anything to tell. I don't think he watched the movie. I, I, I think he just to do with the movie. I think he just really wants to marry his dog. Apparently. We oh wait, I mean, hey, well, I, here, guess what? Man. There's a live action dog. Lady in the Tramp. I'll bet he'll have a field day with that one. Yeah, oh, he might really shoot. like that one. Are we going to do that one? Yeah, I mean, it's a live action Lady in the Tramp. Yeah. There's no music Ooh. in it though. Does it classify? Is are there songs in there? Yeah. What we about didn't when say they Disney do musicals? Spaghetti. We said Disney live action remakes. We, <laughs> when they do the spaghetti, it's got to be a song plan, <laughs> isn't it? You right? just like assume <laughs> there is. It has to be. When it's like an Italian. Yeah. That's when the moon hits the sky. Well, I, I was going to say before you mentioned that you thought the animation was better that that was that was something that was just. I think I'm going to have that as a through line with all of these. Is just that. It just shouldn't be done. I was thinking <laughs> on, on, on a lot of the scenes that were very inanimate character heavy. You can't. I, I was just sitting there like, why? I was like, why? I, I was like, why would we? Why, why would we Greg, ruin Greg this? Here? It's time to stop. He, like they're all so charming in in the originals and in, in both movies so far. The animated characters that are like fish or animals or clocks or random things that don't oh or, or dressers. They make them into charming characters. You can do that. And when you're like, hey, there's going to be real people walking around, what would a real desk look like? It would look hideous. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to do that. Legitimately, given our discussion last time, if they just put googly eyes on everything, it would work better. <laughs> yeah, maybe. legitimately. I think, that, or they just need to like full blown like CG it till till where it's like a real walking thing. Like, I don't care if it looks terrible. Like, there'll be there'll be more. It'll it'll have more feeling than like w w the, the dresser that was in love with the piano in the live action. Excuse version. me, excuse me. My it was clearly identity. a clavichord. Okay, the cl <laughs> the clavichord. Stanley Tucci, you know that? Oh, oh, that really? oh! Yeah. I thought of my one science thing for okay. the whole movie. Here we go. Science like, fact. Obviously, you know, you were you were dealing with magical, uh, mm -hmm. real people and whatever. Um, I, I, they didn't quite explain. Because the, the, the harpsichord guy was like, oh, I got a uh, – sorry, clavichord guy was like, ah, oh, I got a toothache. and But then he starts like shooting his keys out. <laughs> Is that like bits of his body? Yeah. Is he shooting his flesh at people? I have a lot and of And so when he comes back – like, like he was fat and, then he, <laughs> and when he comes back, he's just going to be like super skinny with holes in him because he just like shot a bunch of himself at – anyway. The, 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 the live action point. had a lot of points that where you were like – Wait, is everything a person? Because the books were like, "We'll get them," and I'm like, "Wait, are the books people?" Yeah, that was unclear because <laughs> some of the things had faces and some of them didn't. But remember when she was like, she held the brush open or up, and oh, she was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. "Is this?" And they're like, "No, that's just a hairbrush." <laughs> I, actually, oh, I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, right. I was like, I was like <laughs> "There you go." Um, there's a difference. But no, so and you mentioned Gaston's gun, <laughs> okay. and it's like this big, wide, uh, it opens muzzle up. thing. It, okay, it, so it, yeah, I don't know how much you guys know about guns. The guns we Very have, well. so much. You have that. You have the bullet, Seven right? Things. It's it's a it's a it's a cartridge. Okay, you've got the the physical metal bullet, and it's in a jacket that has gunpowder at the bottom, and then there's like a little hammer, and then when you pull the trigger on your gun, the hammer strikes the bottom of the cartridge, which ignites the gunpowder, which shoots the bullet out, and so then when you know what what get, the thing that get the casing that gets ejected, right. like held the gunpowder. Okay, well, before they invented those cartridges. Um, what you would do is you would take your musket and you would load in gunpowder and then put a bullet in it, right? You'd have like the physical like like spherical bullets, right? Well, if you tip your musket down, guess what happens to your bullet and all of your – so in the song, he picks up his musket and he's pointing it down and then he points it up and fires. I'm like, no, no, no. All the, the shot and the gunpowder just <laughs> fell out. Yeah, like don't point. You, if you if you have a a muzzle loaded gun, you cannot aim it down. Angle That's it down. great. That's great science. So I was from just you. like Nathaniel, and, and that was that was the that was the only movie. thing that that I saw that and I was like, nope, doesn't work like that. You should work in like Hollywood and just like I preview the movies this for their. You for should producers. be a scientist <laughs> and just like go to every production and just say no, don't do that. Just poke holes in it. I think you can make a good <laughs> living out of that. I, 
I'm saying like they can hire me as a consultant. I yeah, I'll have like, good yeah, rates. Like just yeah. run run it by me. <laughs> And uh, the, the the thing that made me the, the like, angriest. I want him to turn into a beast. No, you can't do that. Yeah, that's, that's not that's actually not, how not realistic. it works. But, but no, no, here's the thing. Like, I don't get mad if it's like, oh, it's magic. If you just say, well, it's magic. Well, right. obviously, magic can do whatever you want it to do. Now, mm-hmm. if you say, well, magic only works on Tuesdays, and then on Wednesday you're doing magic. I'm like, now hold on. So in the Fast and the just, Furious, when every magic. character is He's invincible a and also super strong and also can be a hacker and a ninja, you'd be like, hey. I think they kind of established that, though. That You'd be superheroes. like, oh, this is Fast and Furious. This works, actually. Well, no, no. The, the, the secret is family. It just gives you superpowers. <laughs> but the, th- the thing <laughs> that they made me... that's beautiful. The thing where I realized I was like an angry nerd... <laughs> <laughs> the thing where I that's realized beautiful. I was like an angry nerd was the Flash show, which CW. So, you know, I'm basically rolling around in a dumpster hoping something good will happen. <laughs> um, but the, but it, was, it was the Flash show, and they're like, oh, Captain Boomerang attacked. We're going to track his... his uh, he's got some weird elements on his boomerang. What was it? Iron oxide. So rust, his boomerang's rusty, and you're going to track that? Are you... What? <laughs> they were just hoping that like, they would say a word that nobody else would understand. Yeah. And Daniel's like, iron oxide! Iron <laughs> oxide! <laughs> iron oxide! <laughs> actually, actually. Um, actually, um... <laughs> I'm like, first of all, you'd end up in Detroit. Uh, if you but pro- like provisos, uh, uh, a couple of uh, quid pros. <laughs> quid pro. Yeah, I mean that's, but that's like, I mean that's, I, I, so li- live action Little Mermaid, I didn't like, I didn't like it, didn't like the changes they made, but you know, up until the end, for the most part, it was very similar, and so I, it, it didn't. I would it didn't say the live me. action Little Mermaid fell more into the category, other than er- the changing of Eric to little to. To nothing. To Ariel, uh, Eric saving the day and making it make sense that Trident now trusts people because he saved him. Uh, Other than that one switch, which kind of ruined Eric's character, the movie was fell into the category of being the a shot for shock remake, shock for shock, shock for shock, shot for for shock shock remake, (laughs) and and just didn't really need to exist. I wasn't super upset. Whereas this one, I thought. It was just it was just scary to it was just bad to look at and bad to listen to. The music was bad. Everybody was auto tuned. The story just got worse. And and I yeah I don't know. I, yeah. and, and it might be also because I liked the original better. I mean I thought yeah. the original story I, I, was so strong. It was it, there was more depth to screw up. Whereas the Little Mermaid is a little bit more basic yeah. of a story. It's I, like teenage girl likes boy. I feel like I'm mm. I'm in that kind of same camp where. Um, when we watched, we watched Little Mermaid in theaters, and then we watched the original. Mm-hmm. And you know, I thought the I thought the the original was much much better. Right. Obviously, fifty minutes shorter. That's a big thing for me. Woof. Um, I thought it was much much better. But you know, I I to, for me, Little Mermaid live action was very mid. It was just like there's no reason to watch it. I think I actively hated the live yeah. action Beauty and the Beast, and I think it's because when we were watching Beauty and the Beast, the animated one, I was like, oh, I think this is a much better movie than I remember it being. It's just a more complex... It's really good. Like I the think it's the really story good. is more complex and has more depth. Like, the, the Beast in himself is just a, a more complicated character than anybody in The Little Mermaid. I mean, his his whole having to, to reconcile with with loss and going through what he's going through, nobody in The Little Mermaid does that. The closest thing you have is... I mean, I mean, Ariel just feels like Belle in, in this one, where she really wants to go somewhere else than she is, whereas Belle has the freedom to go, Ariel didn't. And and you could picture that as being kind of a tragedy. But other than that, Eric was just a human who's who became enamored and fell in love with a mermaid, and she was just a mermaid who wanted to, to go on land and eventually got her wish. Whereas Beauty and the Beast is like a tale of somebody... Having to go, who, who was a terrible per person and had to go through severe pain to, in order to grow into a better person and happened through other people coming into his life. Like, it's an amazing story. So there was just more to ruin. I think <clears throat> I think you're missing an important through line in The Little Mermaid, which is the father-daughter relationship. Sh- sure. And, and I agree. Which, honestly, which someone, someone pointed out to me in the live-action Little Mermaid, like, so when, when he's breaking her stuff in the original... He he sees the statue of Eric, which is, which she's you know it reminds him of what she's in love with, and so he he blows it up, and then he's walking away, and then he like looks back and he looks really sad. Yeah, like I didn't want to do this, but I had to. Mm-hmm. In the live action one, it looks like he's sh- he's shooting the statue, and like Sebastian's in the way, and so it looks like he's trying to kill Sebastian, and that's why <laughs> Ariel's mad. And then he's not he doesn't do that. He's just like yeah, f you blah, and then just walks away. And so they kind of ruined that aspect in the in the live action remake it, it just seems like in the live action they tend to focus on 
the things that I wouldn't consider to be important things. And I'm like, the really important themes of this movie that made it so amazing, that made it, again, kids are going to be enamored by anything. I mean, they're like, if it's a kids story... Kids are dumb. Yeah, like, and that's, that's the beauty of the original Disney movies is that as a kid, you can appreciate these things for the humor, for the music, for the... The, the more simple like storylines that go through it, but there is a deeper storyline behind it that you can watch as an older person, as a more mature person, as an adult, and still appreciate and get something out of. So it's just as if the live action ones, all they see are the original, and I think it's because they see dollar signs, so they're like, "Well, kids sell things, well, yeah. so let's make it more kid friendly." And the more serious, deep tones that made the story uh, stand the test of time and made it have an appeal to a wider audience. We won't care about those as much, and in fact, we'll like we'll damage them to pursue our desire to make this more flashy and sparkly for kids. Yeah, which is I have um I have one more half-assed bit of research that I think is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, we need a half-assed bit of research button or something. First feature animation film to get nominated for a Best Picture award at the hey, Oscars. I think that was actually a whole ass. That's a that's a that's a good fact. Isn't that a good that's fact? A very, that's a very good that fact. That kind of took me aback. That's I think that's pretty impressive. So that I just mean, means it was a really bad class of movies. <laughs> <laughs> I what, would be curious what, to know what yeah, like yeah. what actually what won were the that comp- year. Nathaniel, but, how, how about yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. look uh, that up for what, us? So what what year was it? This is 90, 91, 92? 6 years ago, right? Oh no, no 27. No, 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 no. We're talking no, about the animated. No. Oh, you said the animated one? First animated feature oh, to get nominated for best picture. Well, that doesn't shock me at all. You thought, Why did you, you let me say bad things about it? Seventeen one got nominated for a best picture. Okay, okay, you you're, 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 so you're laughing. 1991. You're the one that said it was better than the animated one. Why are you laughing? Because you don't actually believe it, Liam. You know in your heart. That <laughs> no, I don't think you're... either of them should have been nominated for an Oscar. Neither of them should <laughs> yeah, have but even you, touched But you an didn't Oscar. explode and laugh like you did with the. If you know, you know the live action no, one dude. is hot garbage, dude. No, bro. No, I disagree. For all the reasons okay. I've already Okay, the fact that the animated out. one was nominated is beautiful. That makes me so much happier. I think that that might just just take the goat status. Right, for I really I'm going to have to... Call, I'm calling you out, Liam. The other so I'm looking at mind. 1991, winners and nominees for Best Picture. It might be 1990. It might be 1990? Yeah. But Beauty or and it, it might be 92. It might be 92. No, it's actually be. definitely 92 because it, okay. it released in fall of 91 and the Oscars is in early spring of... Okay, fair enough, because I was like, I see Dances with Wolves on here, but I don't see Beauty and the Beast. Unbelievable. Fake fan. Fake fan. All right, so. I did my research. Is it Last of the Mohican, 92, that one? Let's find out what Science of the Lambs looks like. Oh, what an amazing year. What a robbery. Because there was another one. All right. Oh, goodness gracious. All right, so here here it is. Best picture. Winner was Science of the Lambs. Nominees. Robbery. Beauty and the Beast. (laughs) Robbery. Uh, Now, here's some movies I've never heard of. Bugsy. Bugsy. Of course, of course. Classic and pr- the Prince of Tides, <laughs> yes, the Prince of Tides, timeless, yeah, <laughs> and uh, and uh, JFK and Oliver Stone, JFK, JFK movie. is an all time movie, and I'm being genuine when I say that. Uh, Anthony okay. Hopkins won actor in a leading role of for Science of the Lambs. Should have. I have a fun fact about that real quick. Jodie Foster won for the Science of the Lambs. The Jeez. shortest amount of time on the screen for a Best Actor or Actress winner was Anthony Hopkins in Science of the Lambs. Fifteen minutes. He was on the screen. That's funny because I, I would have said he was a supporting actor. Terminator you know? 2 Judgment Day was on there for cinematography. Agree. Um, yeah. he, I mean, was he, what, did he win he Best was. Supporting Actor or did he I'm win Best Actor? I'm any of the four supporting actress, actor, actress. Right, actor, he had the shortest time on, well, on hold the screen. On, hold on. Did he win Supporting? Hold or? on. I'm just learning. Bugsy was directed by Barry Levinson. I'm related to a dun, famous dun, Hollywood dun. director. Shock. Does anyone know anything You've about this Barry Bugsy? Levinson? I've never seen Bugsy. I'm just, just like, Bugsy. Um, and I have one more piece of half-ass research that I thought was pretty cool. Twenty-first highest grossing film of all time, animated? Uh, no, live oh, action. Gosh. Yeah, is this adjusted for inflation? Highest grossing? I don't know. Uh, and let's be honest, well, the top the ten behind it. If you if you watch the pitch meeting for it, they showed that at the end. I think it was like 14th when it came out, and then it, it's, yeah, it's but probably like dropped over 2016. Yeah. Jumped it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, <laughs> we all know that that's just <laughs> this is senseless. Frozen, Frozen Two, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, one, it, it it was it was like the second live action to come out. I think I think Jungle Book might be the first, and then it was that. So mm. yeah, it stands I think Jungle the Book reason. Was 2016. It's the same reason why like. Star Wars, uh, The Force Awakens, Episode Seven, which is an atrocity, <laughs> is the highest grossing of all the Star Wars. It, it was just because it came on the heels of a big break, and I think that's probably what it's suffering from. Um, 
Yeah, honestly, I went in thinking that it was probably one of my higher rated live action remakes um, with the expectation and the hope that it would be and was far more disappointed. So I guess we don't have much to rank, but we have four movies to rank. Yeah, I want to introduce our ranking thought process yeah, right, yeah, for yeah. future yeah, go for it, episodes. Go for it. Um, well, yeah, we're going to watch, what, two Every episode. Well, and that's going to be like... We, until we clear this series, we're going to go the right. two... Eventually, we'll get to the point where we're just and watching I, the movie I think at a time. there are... I believe when I looked it up... Like 10 or 11. According to my criteria, it was like 10 or 11. Yeah, because we're gonna, yeah, we, it, we have some kind of criteria. And we're going to rank it from a scale of 0. 0.1 to 10.0, so yes. using decimals. Take the aggregate mm-hmm. of our scores, use that number, compare it to the other movies we've watched... Rate right. them accordingly. Right. And, and we'll build a live And we'll build like a live and, list. And we'll bring it in once we have more to rank. We'll start yeah. that maybe halfway through or something um, it, to make it a little more interesting than just four movies uh, on a board. And that also give us a, a wider range in which to judge. When you only have two, you're like, ah, oh, one was a 10, one was a zero. Um, when, you have, <laughs> yeah, yeah. when you have 20 to rank, you, you think you get a little more detailed with the numbers. So you want to rank at the end of this, we rank all of them? I don't know. We had talked about either having its own episode to be ranking all of them afterwards, right, and right, then right. we and I think I think that makes the most sense because we can we and can I, rank more things. We can also like we can do a, a collective aggregate yeah, well, ranking. We I, can do individual rankings, and we can also do music rankings. Could do music rankings. I think that'd be fun. So and 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 I think it's you know we we do like one episode to establish our ranking board, but then after that, yeah. then you know at the end of then each it episode, easy to we'll add. Just, I, again, I'm thinking like Top Gear. They just have the magnet ship that just figure out where it is, yep. slap it right on there, and we'll, just, we'll get an ever-expanding Yeah. We'll have our list. intern work right. on yeah. the list. Yeah. Well, yeah we've we'll got to pay them a little bit more. <laughs> no, I don't think we have to you pay don't, them at all. Greg, you don't have to pay 30, an unta- unpaid internship. Unpaid internship. They're here for the experience. Yeah. It's going to be okay. great on their next podcasting gig. Resume. Yeah, it's going to be great on their resume. <laughs> Um, Do it. Yeah, so I think in, in conclusion, I would say Beauty and the Beast original uh is amazing my, my if i had to and again i've been shocked by all these that i've watched so far if i had to pre-put it somewhere i think it might end up being the the number one for me of all of these original disney movies that we're going to watch um whereas I, I i do think little mermaid was better than i thought as well um music ranks higher than where i think the movie would rank and both the live actions would be pretty low with the beauty and the beast live action being underneath mm-hmm. although i don't think it will be the worst live action <laughs> yeah, I, I have I a feeling would, there will be Mulan far is less. the worst live action. I can't, I cannot foresee anything being worse than Mulan live action because it's not a shot for shot remake. Yeah, and they literally make a they make it's a decision a that completely undermines the entirety of the point of the movie. So, but we'll get there. We'll yeah, get there. We'll get there. Which, which, there. speaking of which, Liam, well, you get to pick the one we watch next. Let's go. I I want to do Lion King. Yes, oh, yes. Oh, dude. yes. I do. I, Lion King the original is is that's one Dude, that's gotta that's be the best. That, that's, sure. that's the, best that's the one that I'm thinking might contend with because initially that's what I would have said I would have said Lion King and so now I'm gonna be interested I'm to, very after excited. watching it to to say okay did I like that and compare but, but, it but here's the thing like I've been you know trying to take the visuals out of my ranking of mm-hmm. the movies I don't think that's possible for Lion King that movie no, no. So, the live action remake is, is so well. The live action remake where it's, it's so just another animated ugly. movie. Yeah, that one that <sighs> one's gonna be rough be because be there, there are zero humans to push along that story. Right. There is I mean, you've had Bell, you've had Gaston and half of the beast, if oh, you want to consider hot him a take. person. I think Gaston wasn't hot enough to be Gaston or thick enough to be Gaston. I agree. It should have been John Cena in a wig. <laughs> <laughs> I that's that's John one where Cena I think might um, have been a perfect cast. John Cena would be good. John Cena would have been good. Yeah. He, he's got that chisel jaw. You need someone with that chisel jawline. That guy just didn't have it. Yeah. And, he was Gaston and also Light. He was like, Gaston like, at home. Not that he has to do amazing singing, but yeah, I, didn't, I thought his singing was very yeah. mid. I, sing, uh, singing was whatever. I just, I, I was like, he's not, he's not, yeah, he he's wasn't, not yoked. The, the problem is, like, we said the same exact thing with the villain from, from Little Mermaid is that the villains are very charismatic, over the top people. And you need somebody like a Jim Carrey to just be absurd. <laughs> okay, I would also take a, a Jim Carrey as if they did Jim Gaston. Carrey as I mean, Gaston I mean, in a, like a muscle suit. Yeah, imagine imagine it would have been a muscle amazing. Suit. Like yeah. imagine just the facial range that Jim Carrey has. That's what people need to compete with animated characters that can do that. I mean, he's he is absurd in the original, and he's so funny. Whereas in this one, 
he did zero to me. Mm. Absolutely nothing. When he was trying to make a joke or say something, there was nothing. There was no chemistry between him and Nafu because Nafu was infatuated with him. It was just it was just awful. Like that's why I had nothing to like you mentioning him was the first time I even thought to talk about Gaston, which is which is a shame because in the original like he's he's a horrible I mean he's a horrible guy, obviously. There's no redemption redemptive qualities about him whatsoever. Uh, but he's he's hilariously charming as a villain. Like you never necessarily feel like he's much of a threat until the end when he's when he's actually hunting because that's what he's good at. Uh, and he's just so he's just like this harmless, funny <laughs> oaf. Like he's hilarious. Uh, but yeah, I, w- I would say that was it. That was a definitely a disappointment of the live action. So, all right. So we'll Lion do, King. We'll be Lion doing the Lion King, King in, yeah. t- in two weeks. I don't know what the exact Seven, date is yeah. for that, but uh, uh, I can pull up the calendar. It would be. July fifth. So no, yes, July fifth. America's birthday, July fifth. We uh, um, we should all wear patriotic things. Yes, we will be wearing we'll patriotic be wearing blue, things. Red, white, and blue. We yep. will be shifting our seats uh, once again. Mm-hmm. Um, who knows? Maybe Liam will be in the producer chair. Uh, who knows? Uh, we, we, we will change it up, uh, and we'll be talking about the Lion King. We'll start. We will live stream at eight p.m. Uh, we love hearing from you guys. Uh, so as you're watching, we loved the the interaction. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Marco. There might have been a few more we didn't get to. Uh, once our viewers get to be more than two. No, uh, no, no. We once, want just you guys. Yeah, once my mom the figures real out how to comment on a YouTube live <laughs> stream, maybe she'll comment on it. What did you so, say? So just, just to make anybody aware, the, the few people that do watch this, if you are not subscribed to uh, the 4D podcast, you can't comment. So... Uh, give us a subscribe. Give us a like. Uh, we'd really appreciate it. We love hearing from you guys. We think that's part of the, the, the honestly, yeah. the best part about the part show. Part of the reason we want to do it live is so we can is interact. so we can have some interaction. So we'd love for you guys to join in. Um, and if you know that you like The Lion King, definitely hop in next uh, next show, 8 p.m. And where can people find us, Nathaniel? I, I don't know if, if you're if you're if you're ready enough to change the animation. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it. Go so for if, it, hey, guys. If everything explodes, it's Greg's fault. Good to me. All right, ready? And dragon We're that do it. and here. We go. Look at that. Look at, Look that. at him go. Like, he's like it's like he's a professional. It's like he knows what he's doing. You can find us on Spotify if you want to listen to the audio version of this. We also have um, just some audio podcasts that we don't do live or in the studio here. Um, so if you want to find extra content, yeah, those are more. So this is more of you know we're looking at one or two movies, juxtaposing mm-hmm. them. Um, that's like we're literally on much broader topics. It's much longer, much much broader. Yeah, broader is the best way to put it. It's we're we're kind of going over big topics, yeah. series is. Um, the latest one we went out, Greg and I watched every single Batman movie and talked about every single one of them. It's um, great. It was a lot of fun. Um, and you can also obviously subscribe to us here on YouTube, like our channel. And then if you'd like to see more of me and Nathaniel, we have a cooking show on YouTube, The Kitchen Chemist, where Nathaniel uh, talks Liddy. about I'm, 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 chemistry and cooking, and it's pretty awesome. Work- season two is in the works. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be good. All right. Um, and yeah, so uh, any last thoughts, guys? Any send offs? No, thanks to all our fans. Been great getting some great feedback from been some friends. Some yeah. uh, Jakob, keep sending us letters, man. We, yeah. we love having you. I'm if anyone else Jakob wants to send us a letter to, to read on the, on the <laughs> hey, he'll, he'll we'll, get there we'll someday. She, he's in France, so the time zone's a little different. I think. He's playing yeah. volleyball, right? <laughs> he, he always is. <laughs> I mean, that's that's literally all he <laughs> does. Dog. He always is. All right, everybody. Well, until next time, uh, we are the 4D Podcast with uh, Nathaniel, Liam, and Greg, and we are signing off. All right. You mute the mics.